So is your husband the head of you? Oh, that's so good. Yes, my husband is my king. He is the king of the castle. Right on. Being an a Oscar-winning actress, you're a worker, you you know how to be independent. What is it like to have a man that's the head of you, you can look up to and admire? It's an honor. Yeah. And it took me a minute to get there because I was that independent, empowered Black woman that couldn't <laughs> nobody tell me nothing. So it took me a minute to understand that I did have a king and that I had to understand the order of the relationship. Yep. So I'm, I'm grateful that he was patient enough and I'm, loved me through. I was going to ask you about that. How did he deal with that when you were on the ego trip before you were able to let the ego go and follow the order of God? Well, we've been best friends since 10th grade, since nice. we were 14 years old. So we were best friends before we were anything. And he's the one person that can have a conversation with me that most cannot because he's been knowing me since I was a little girl. Yes. So he was able to talk to his friend. And that's how I was able to let go of that ego because he was dealing with his friend. Right on. And he was saying things to me that it was taking me to my knees, Jesse. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it was taking me down to my knees, Jesse. I was like, don't tell me the truth about myself like that. Now I can't, my ego can't stand that. But I'm That's so grateful right. for it because it helped me to grow. It helped me to love, you know? So. I'm grateful for those moments. You are famous for hosting the Amarose Slut Walk. You came up with this term, slut. What was the purpose of using that word? Basically, it's really what people think about you. It's not really actually what they know, right? right? So right. I could, you know, I went through a divorce. And then I start dating after that. And it's like, well, if going out on a date with a guy makes me a slut, then that's just what I'm gonna be. I don't think going out on a date makes you a slut, but having sex with different men makes you makes you a slut. Well, what does it make you if you have sex with different women? A slut maker. A slut maker. <laughs> it's it's amazing. amazing. The merch the is, amazing. is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. The merch is amazing. Subscribe now. Come back. Do you want to be interviewed? No. Oh. Amazing. Well, they gone. That's oh, amazing. They gone. They walked away. Do you realize that blacks are, no one like black people? The Mexicans don't like them, the Hispanics don't like them, the whites don't like them, good black people don't like them. Exactly. Uh, the exactly. Asians don't like them because you guys are so violent and complaining. Jesse, you black. Exactly, and exactly. You Jesse, realize, you're black. No, do you realize that most people don't like you guys? Oh, you I people, wonder why that is. Because you're exactly. so mean and complaining and nasty. No, exactly. it's because of, it's because of racism and the white supremacy, Jesse. Yeah. It's because of the white gaze you know on the what? black body. <laughs> that bag you have over there, that that cotton picking bag. Yes. How many how many white people do you know that had that same bag? Uh, that used that same bag to pick cotton. Phil Robinson, you know who he is from du Dynasty. He picked cotton. He's white. <laughs> Remember him? Good <laughs> man too. Dude, I don't but, like you, but I like you. Yeah, lead. <laughs> Cause you say stuff where I'm like, I don't. Why don't you? Where like do you me? get this from? Why don't you like me? No, I'm sorry. Let me be clear now. Yeah. I actually, I, I actually, you totally like me. I do. Yeah. I, I do, which is I, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it with you. <laughs> uh, but I just want to ask you this something. Because let, let I me, want wait, let me ask you this. people to be strong, let, morally. Then if, if you want them to be strong, family lead. If you want them to be country. strong, if you want them to be strong, then you have to be honest about the experience of being black in America. That's You're not crazy. being honest about being. The AP says Jesse. When did Aunt Esther join the Arkansas Senate? <laughs> 
Also legend that has it. That was Arkansas, not Kansas. Uh, she lived in Arkansas. Uh, they said Arkansas. Uh-uh. That's Arkansas. That's Arkansas, baby. <laughs> That's not Art Kansas. That's what they put. AP. Oh, he put Art Kansas? He put Art Kansas. It's not Arkansas? Maybe he just missed that. He misspelled it? Maybe so. Oh, okay. The, the chat is saying that I, that I spelled Arkansas wrong, but he put it here. He said Arkansas. He put A-R-K-A-N-S-A-S. That's his Arkansas. Not me. That's Arkansas, boy. I know, but he spelled it Arkansas. Is what How I'm spelled it? Trying to put. Look, right here he said A-R-K-A-N-S-A-S. That's Arkansas. I know, but he spelled it Arkansas. That's how the world spells it. Oh, that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> he black. He black. Oh, sorry, guys. What are it was, you talking about? I thought it was about? pronounced. I, I was reading how it was spelled. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you go to school? Uh, no, I get what they're saying. Oh, sorry. Slow, did, you go to high, uh, did you go to school at all? <laughs> <laughs> I missed that word. He's from, he from L.A., folks. He went to a public school. <laughs> he said that's how the world spells. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe and follow JRP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Joel Friday TV. He black. At 11 a.m. I realize this is the reason why the people of the ego always win. It's because they're Fully walking in the ego. No doubt, nothing. They've embraced and accepted the ego as part of their life. They have everything to offer. The sex, the drugs, and the shortcuts. Now the people of God, the people who want to do right, the people who call themselves Christians and believers and they have faith and all that stuff. Us on this side ain't got nothing to offer the world. Nothing. Because we're not really walking in the light of God. To really get in the ring and really win the battle, you got to die to the ego completely. The Hake Report.com from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. Someone bought a coffee. What exactly is a rhino? R I N O. Republican in name only? Question mark. Is it someone who doesn't agree with what the Republican platform states? Is it someone who doesn't adhere to the traditional Republican values from the past? Is it someone who doesn't share adhere to Republican values as they are generally characterized today? You seem to use it as a catch-all term for a Republican who does something a real, yet to be defined, Republican wouldn't do. And also, to someone mean anyone who isn't a Trump supporter. To answer your question, what is a rhino? A rhino is most of the Republican Party. Practically all of the Republicans are rhinos now. And the Republican st Party as it started may have been evil, but that's not the Republican Party that I mean. I mean the Republican Party that I grew up in, where uh, it's God, Christianity, family, responsibility, law and order, no hatred for white people, no kissing up to the fake racism thing. No kissing up to these women and these gays and all that stuff. No giving in to this abortion thing. Pro-life women running the pro-life thing. All that stuff is rhino. Makes me want to spit. Like this evil George W. Bush. I'm a compassionate conservative. In other words, you're a mama. That's not true. That's not compassion as, as God called us to be. The effeminate, soft, emotional spirit inside of him that kisses up to big mama Michelle and cozies up to her. I'm shaking my head. The American Anchor Baby. The American Anchor Baby at 12 noon Pacific time. Your philosophy is love your enemy. Isn't that basically what you're saying here? Correct. In our discussion, love your enemy. What do you okay, think that means, I though? Know. What is, What does that mean to you? It means try to, I guess it means try to make him uh, change. No. Or, or accept you. No, uh, it just means don't hate. Okay, well, that's just the word, really. That just the word is is the greatest commandment that Jesus uh, gave us. Didn't you say you were a Christian? Yeah, does it say thou shalt not hate? I didn't see that. It, it says, says, it says to love your enemies. He said love your enemies. That's in the Ten Commandments? I know uh, you said I you're can't. Christian too, so I don't know if that's just words too. No, no, I accept Jesus. And that's all you got to do is accept Jesus as your personal Savior and mean it and be sincere. And, and love your enemy. 
Yeah, well, that's what you say. Uh, no, that's, that's what Jesus not, said. Uh, well, he, he may have said that, but he was the son of God. We're human. So when the son of but God, we, wait a second, wait a second, let me understand this, Mark. So you're, you told me you're a Christian, and you said you gave your life to Jesus and all that, the Son of God. The Son of God told you you must love your enemy, and so what, when the Son of God tells you that, you tell him, well, you're the Son of God, not me. But I'm not perfect, and neither are you. Hassan, have you ever and can you ever solve a non-practical problem by thinking about it? The, the more you think about it, the more I think you, you dig yourself a... You know, dig, dig yourself deeper. Amazing. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Gerald? <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of low on wisdom this morning. I don't have anything that profound. I got bit by a dog over the weekend. It's been stressful. It's been a stressful <laughs> past couple of days. <laughs> anyway, let's see what Gerald's got. <laughs> you got bit by a dog? Yeah, that's a long story. <laughs> you got rabies? Well, the more I thought about it, the more I thought about the problem, it just caused more problems. <laughs> I went to urgent care. I, I, Are you concerned about <clears throat> sitting next to a son and he might have rabies? Yes. Yeah. Are you concerned you yes. can catch rabies? From thought about side? it. You better call your mom. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets Sandman when, when you're gone? Jesse. His, his mama take him. Uh, no, I'm gifting him to Jesse. Uh-uh, he won't last long. <laughs> okay. Mr. Sandman will be following you real soon. <laughs> Give him to your mama. I mean, that's probably not much better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick says, seek immediate care if you were bitten by any animal. You may be in danger. Well met. But he did. And he went to urgent care. And they put a band-aid on him and gave him a glass of water and told him to go home. <laughs> did you drink? <laughs> oh, what is happening? Did you drink water? <laughs> <laughs> you want some water? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway. <laughs> you want me to answer? This is, funny. this is funny. I don't even know why I'm laughing. <laughs> They have morbid <laughs> sense of humor. Oh my god. I gotta leave the studio. I'm crying. Right now. I don't I even know why. Leave. Char and Char hate what you do. <laughs> uh, Explain yourself. <laughs> All right. Are we on drugs? What's going on? Oh god. <laughs> Our battle is a spiritual battle. It's a warfare between good and evil. And it's happening inside of us. And it's happening outside of us, inside of others, as I've said before. And there is nothing we can do about it but see the battle inside. You, know, you, you see your thoughts and emotions. And all thoughts and feelings are evil. And one of the, the primary reasons that it's so hard to forgive your mothers it is because your mothers are evil. The hell come through the woman. Uh, the women are daughters of Eve. And when Eve believed the serpent, Satan became the woman's god. And then when the man, when Adam believed Eve, the woman became the man's god. And that's why you're afraid of women. 
You're free to your mother because you resent her. You have her nature, which is not really her nature, but it's the nature of evil. The gates of hell is through the woman. And they can't help it. It's not their fault that it happened. It's only their fault that they don't overcome as adults. Just like with the men, it's their fault that they're weak, bader, emotional, doubtful men, right? They're just not working on themselves to overcome because we can overcome all things. When you wake up and you start seeing these different thoughts and feelings inside of you, the so-called good ones or the bad ones, and you start to really catch on that Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Hi, y'all. You can get involved by calling 888 7753 773. 888-77-JESSE, J-E-S-S-E, my biblical question for this week, the biblical question, 
Do you have a fear of criticism? Do you have a fear of criticism? Do ya? A good question. And again, they're put there to to um, to encourage you to start thinking for yourself. It's up to you, but you want. You should want, well, most people don't want, most people want to be a group thinker. They're afraid to stand alone. But for those who want to overcome, you should want to be an individual. You should want to overcome the world. You should want to be free. But most people don't understand that they are, they are afraid. But for those who do, we have every way that you can watch, watch, and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. Manhood is ours coming up in the um, second hour. Third hour today, every Wednesday, the third hour, manhood hour. All right? And to don't and, and if you're like busy and you want to still listen to the show live, you can anywhere in the world. And we're heard around the world by everybody and their mama. Everybody and their mama. All right. I um um you can be listening to the show on your iPhone or iPad, no matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. By calling the listen line at 641-793-1500. And to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buy me a coffee. BuyMeACoffee.com slash JLP Talk. BuyMeACoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Or Bond JLP on Cash App. Bond JLP on Cash App there. I do appreciate it. Cannot believe it's Wednesday again. Isn't that amazing? It's Wednesday again. Wednesday again. And by the way, there's one line open. Someone want to jump in there before it's uh, taken up. You can. 888-7753-773. What I clearly realize now, and I've said it over and over, but I'm saying it to remind you, in that you may wake up and become an individual so you'll be able to survive in this crazy Old Testament world. Because that's what's happening outside of you and also inside of you in your imagination and emotion. But it's the Old Testament. And, and the New Testament is inside. But if you want to survive, you can. You can be in this world and not of it. But know that the children of the devil still will make attempts to come after you as the devil does in your mind and emotion. But if you're working on yourself, you won't be bothered by the children of the devil because the devil has no authority. But you got to really really work on yourself so that you can overcome anger, fear, and then the old nature of the imagination and emotion. um, I've said over and over again that my country is not coming back. And on a daily basis, I'm seeing that to be true. And but in seeing it to be true, I'm neither disappointed or angry or afraid of that reality. I'm not afraid of it because it's spiritual. It's just the way it is. And a way has been made that all people who want it, but only a few are going to accept it. But all people who want it can be free by living within. In spite of what's happening out there, outside of you, 
your hell is in you. Everybody, hell is in them, right? So in spite of what they're doing to each other out there in the world, because they have not found their way back to the Father, you still can be free. I know that's hard to believe, but you can. And for right now, you know, maybe things will change. But for right now, there's nothing you can do that I'm aware of to stop my country from being destroyed. There's nothing you can do. The young people have been trained to destroy it. They have brought, the government is for everything but the country, and they set it up. They bring on the problems. And they brought illegal aliens in, and they'll change the laws that goes against the American citizen or against the Americans who try to do the, quote, unquote, the right thing. The laws are against you now. They're not for you. They protect the criminals and not the innocent. I heard, I used to hear over the years that that was going to happen, but I didn't know it was possible because I didn't understand. But um, my country is gone. It's not coming back. In case you still think there's hope for America, I need to show you there's no hope. No hope. Zero. I was on Ma- Michael Malice podcast yesterday, and he asked me, "Was there w- w- what can we do about all the, about what's happening with the children and all these things?" I said, "Nothing, because the parents don't care. That's why it's happening, and the government don't care. If the parents don't care, why should you care? They ain't your children." God didn't put you responsible for, uh, he didn't make you responsible for somebody else's children. He made the father and the mother responsible for them. And if they don't care about their own children, then who is? In the show with Michael Malice, I'm being told that my interview will be available next week, but I thought he said it was today, but maybe next week. Um, okay, next week. Next week, I'm told. We'll let you know. Um, it was a fun show, too. I enjoyed it. Um, you're not your brother's keeper. I know that uh, the ego want to think that it is because it like to feel good thinking that it's helping others. But you're not your brother's keeper. So here is more proof for those who think there's hope for America. This is for Reuters. Local leader called for more border enforcement on Monday after a motorboat loaded with immigrants breached itself in in the i mean in the uh, suburb of Carlsbad, California so local leader called for more border enforcement on Monday after a motor boat loaded with migrant breached itself in the suburb of Car Bass, Bass, California. Uh, is that down by Orange County somewhere? Where is that? Oh, San Diego County. Oh, down in that area. Amazing. Watch this from X.
That's in that's in California. That's in Cal must be my headset went out for some reason. That's in California. Isn't that amazing? That's not in some other country. Let's see here. Testing one, two, okay. That's not in some other country. That's in California. And some of you may have been watching the hate report. That's not far from uh, where he's been show showing beast pictures <laughs> on his job. I haven't gone down in that area in a minute, but it used to be really nice. And I'm pretty sure it is still. Isn't that amazing? You saw them just running in on the boat. It looked like there were cars waiting for them, so somebody appeared to be helping them on both ends to get in on the boat, get here, and cars are waiting to get you to deeper into California. Amazing, huh? You still think your country, you still have hope that your country will get better? You still have it? Amazing. I never thought California is nothing like what it was in 1968 when I came here. And don't they supposed to have coast, coast guards on, on the beaches there? Nobody seemed to be stopping these people at all. America, they have done to America what was done to Europe. And I remember reporting on this kind of stuff and what they've done to Africa, South Africa. Mommy Africa. Somebody is heading this thing up all around the world. And all the countries that are white and good has been destroyed deliberately. It's not an accident. And it's all about the money and about control. It's not about love. It's about money and control. Isn't that amazing? That was in California on the beach. Can you imagine walking on the beach, hate down there walking on the beach trying to take pictures, videos to show on the show, and a boat full of illegal aliens come in and nearly run him over? <laughs> what a mess! And if you think that's bad, Watch this. This is from the New York Post. About 1,300 African migrants gather outside City Hall Tuesday morning hoping to appear at a hearing on the black experience in the shelter system. Think about that. These blacks come here illegally. They are put up in shelters with our tax dollars, and then they want to uh, meet up at City Hall to talk about their black experience. Do you hear the word racism again? White supremacy again? Illegal aliens. And who is behind it? But they're showing up talking about the black experience in the city shelter system. So if the black experience in the city shelter system is worse than where they came from, why did they stay where they were? Why did they come here? With some saying they were promised work visas or green cards if they showed. Watch this from CBS. Every migrant we spoke with has something in common. They want to work. Right now, they're trying to cut through all the red tape that's stopping them, asking local leaders to put pressure on Washington, D.C. to make a change. They're here to show you that they belong and that they are here <laughs> and that they should not be erased. 
Please listen to them. Black migrants have reported verbal and physical abuse due to the color of their skin. This mother and her two kids have been staying at the Humanitarian Relief Center at Floyd Bennett Field. But she says the city should be providing more assistance. Uh, what I expect to have like a help from American people, I did not see that. The relief center <laughs> continues to be a point of contention for Republican Council Member Vicki Palladino, who says the city is already giving the migrants too much. This is absolute, absolute insanity at its finest. And most migrants we saw out here today were young men. But Amazing. She expected more from the American people, says the illegal alien. And, and, and black don't want to be erased. Ah. What a mess. Can you imagine they come here illegally and already they're begging? They're going to want some reparation. The illegal alien blacks. And whatever, we needed you, Lord. We need you now. It's over. And they throw out the word, the black experience, the black people need this, because they know white people are afraid of the black. They know that word black, uh-uh. Back down. What a shame. My country is gone. It reminds me of the squatters now in America. You have an empty house somewhere for sale or waiting to rent out or, or to buy. The squatters can move in now, and you're stuck. It's like these blacks are playing like that. It's like someone uh, break into your house and insist, complain that you should be giving them more. You should let me stay in the bedroom upstairs. What the? This is happening in America. And the unfortunate thing is, it's only going to get worse. If I can use the word unfortunate, I don't know if it's un unfortunate or not. But it's only going to get worse because they're putting the women in charge. They're putting the women in charge. The women are not earning their way in charge. They're putting them there. I heard some stories on yesterday about men who uh, were in the military. And, they, and while there, the women took over. They gave the women positions in the military. And it is a mess. A um, real mess. And they have some women that are black leading the military group there. And they talk about, well, it's hard enough uh, on, a, on a black woman in leadership and the fact that I'm black. And she wants them to act according to the way she wants them to act. In the military. So much for winning wars, huh? It is over. Bye-bye, America. It's gone. And they're putting women in charge to make sure that America never returns. to make sure it never returns. Isn't that amazing? Because mama's love has no power, and they can't make things better at all, zero. Look at what's happening now. And the White House literally could care less, zero. And yet they want to hold meetings in, in Congress and the Senate to figure out how much money to give to other countries, Ukraine and others. Why is this from X? Okay. All right.
One thing you can depend on, you put the blacks in charge, they're going to sing and dance for you, but that's about it. Everything else, no effort. It turned to a ghetto. It's over. My country is gone. Isn't that amazing? And it used to be so beautiful. Growing up in America was a blessing. I remember when I first started radio and doing appearing on TV shows and things like that. I had my own show. I talked about how instead of the blacks complaining about, oh, we were brought here by ships or something dumb. We were so they should be counting their blessing that God looked out for them and did a favor and got them out of Africa. They could be stuck in Africa. And so instead of complaining, they should be glad for slavery. Otherwise you're being real slave in Africa. You better be glad that the blacks in Africa sold you to the Arabs and they they made it, they got you here to America instead of other countries. But no, they whine and they complain and this is what we have. You still believe my country coming back? It's over. And I understand the, the men who have fought in the military and you fought for America, you say, and you lost limbs and some, some, many died and came back wounded, lost your family when you got back, all kind of stuff. It was all in vain. You were fighting somebody else's war for them. They didn't care about you at all. They don't even take care of the military people when they come back here. They have to have fundraisers to help the military people, the American military people. But the Elisa come, they put them in four-star hotels. They get them food, free food and free everything, but not men of the military. The men of the military has to find their way or just suffer. In the good old days, that wasn't the case in my country, the USA. This is from Caroline, Caroline Journal. Caroline Journal, a 16-year-old student at Central, Central Davidson High School in North Carolina, was suspended for three days last week after using the term illegal alien during a vocabulary assignment. According to an email describing the incident, a young man in class took offense and reportedly threatened to fight him. His words were deemed to be disrespectful to classmates who, were, who are Hispanics. I wonder if they were legal. If they got mad at the word illegal alien, So the student was dismissed from school for three days, according to this report. This is in America. And guess what? Yes, you were right. I can hear y'all thinking. Yes, you are right. The teacher was female. The principal was a female. Or according to the report, is a female. According to CDHS Davidson K twelve dot N C dot C com. The principal at Central Davidson High School is Heather 
Horton. Now do you believe me when I tell you that it's never going to get better? I see conservative media and liberal media, conservative government and quote unquote con uh, lib quote unquote conservative government and the liberal government promoting women. When they do, when they have incidents that happen, they need so-called experts, whether it's a doctor or a lawyer or an Indian chief. Most of the time, it's females now. Most of the time. Every once in a while, they'll throw in a male. But most of the time, it's female. My country's gone. They put in these female in position to make sure that the country never get better. Even if Donald Trump get in, the great white hope, he may make some things better, and I believe he will, the jobs and other things, but the country never going to get better because women were not created to lead. They were created to follow. And so it's impossible that they're going to be able to lead it. So it can only get worse. Look at the blacks. The blacks got worse because the women took over or they gave over, turned it over to the women. The blacks didn't get better. It has nothing to do with slavery or Jim Crow or racism or systemic racism or so-called white supremacy and all that. Have no fear. Salvation is here. But you got to work on you. A way has been made where you can live amongst the dark but not be a part of the darkness. It's going to get worse right here on earth. And if you doubt me, start working on yourself. Look at what's going on inside of you and see the hell in you. How bad is that, huh? That's what's in every human being. And because most human beings are not working on themselves, they're inflicting it upon one another. They're coming after you too. Will you be ready? In the right way, will you be ready? Will you overcome anger and fear? 888 7753 773. A quick break. Back in a moment. Phone calls and super chats. books that are amazing. I highly recommend you get them. Seven Guaranteed Steps to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success Guide. Even if you're not starting a business, but you have a job or you're on welfare, it can help you if you do. Be doers of the word, all right? From rage to responsibility. From rage. That's why I write about in the first chapter, especially how I overcame. Scam. How the black leadership exploits black Americans. They are using them. And blacks are too willing to be used. And then my last book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. They are all amazing books, and they are helpful. Go to rebuildingtheman.com if you want an autograph copy or call 800-411-2663.
Okay, welcome back. 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. We're going to get to your super chats here in a minute. What a mess. Do you believe me now? When I say, and I've been saying it for 34, 35 years, I didn't just start yesterday that I'm about a spiritual. It's not about race. It's not physical. And anyone that thinks that it is, is blind. You can't see. You're blind. And I understand I used to be blind. I once was blind, but now I see. Once was lost, but now I'm found. So I do understand what it feels, what it's like to be blind. And you can be blind and not even know that you're blind. That's what's so weird about it. You don't even know it until you wake up from within. What a mess. But you can be free in the mess. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in anger. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in anger. You don't have to live in anger. You don't have to live in fear. It's up to you. And you can always tell a fearful, angry person. They always blame it others for their issues. Always. It's always about what somebody else did. And they'll be, they'll be tripping on years gone by, right, which doesn't exist. But they're blaming others. Lost, weak people, male and females, always blame others for their issues because they're evil and they're blind. Yes. So this is a comment from Hack on YouTube. Hello, JLP. Big fan here from the sunny south east of Ireland. You the man all the way from Ireland. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. All the way from Highland. Har I mean Ireland. Thank you, Hack. I appreciate it. It's a spiritual battle all around the world. Let me go to the first time caller out of Ohio, Josh. Josh, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. Good morning. How are you doing? All this well, Josh. Thank you. I uh, I just wanted to give you start out with giving you a little bit of praise. I've been listening to you and watching you out here recently, and really, really love uh, the stuff you're putting out there, what you believe in and stand for. Um, Actually, I was when I called yesterday. Uh, I wanted to talk about this morning is with everything going on in the world, and I I, I really do believe we're living in the end times of you know God's people and Him coming back. And you just you really, no matter what I do or what I see other people do, I don't I don't think there's going to be a resolve that we're going to be happy with. I think because God talks about this. Time is going to happen, and what does, what does like, he what does he say about it? Well, um, he says men will sleep with men, women will sleep with women. Um, basically, how the devil won't hide himself anymore; he'll come straight out and forward with it. Although, until you seek righteousness, you really, like you just said earlier, you really are blind to it. Like I've, I haven't been saved for very, very long, and. I really knew how uh, the meaning of hidden in plain sight meant until I started looking for God and seeing how outright the devil is right in people's face, and they just they just don't even. And did, and did God say that times like these are the end time? Is when the end time is coming? I yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And does He say that in the Bible? Oh, he I, he says there would be signs, and those are among the signs. He said that there would be signs of the end time. Yes. And, and where is that in the Bible? I'm not saying he didn't say it, but where is that in the Bible? Um, I'm not 
completely sure. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I've read every single book of the Bible, but I've I've talked to my pastor. I've talked to family members. I have read a few books of the Bible completely through, and these are just, um, I guess, perceptions that I've acquired from reading it and listening to other people's opinions. And so are you waiting for the end time? I I'm being a Christian um now yeah I am I am more than happy for it to happen I just it's just it's kind of a, a love and hate thing I feel like because I feel like the country is just crumbling around us but to know what's coming because of that I guess it's the it's the bittersweet part of it And so you waited for the end time I'm I mean, I'm not necessarily waiting. I'm really waiting for things to get better, whether that is <laughs> salvation and or, you know, things on here on earth to change, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> and so do you realize that ever since mankind existed, they, mankind has been talking about the end time is coming? Do I realize that we've been talking about it for ever? Is that what you mean? Yeah, ever since human being existed on this earth. Yeah, they, they have been waiting. I do. Yeah, they have been waiting on the end time, and the end time never came. Right. Yeah. We think about that. Well, I've. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot to think about that because that that could imply that everything you see nowadays referring to the rapture is a bunch of baloney. <laughs> <laughs> Are you waiting for the rapture? I am I am waiting for whatever God's will to happen happens. That's what right. I'm waiting for. Nice. But how about the rapture? Um as long as I go, I'm doing everything I can to make sure I go the first time. So if yeah, if that's if that gets me to heaven then I'm ready. And what does the rapture look like? Um, well, from everything that I've read, it it looks pretty awful, to be honest. And, and for the majority of people. What does the rapture look like, though? For you, who are waiting for the rapture, you waited for the rapture because you're a Christian waiting for the rapture, right? Mm-hmm. And so what does well, the rapture... I don't know I'm waiting for it. I'm just prepared. You're prepared for the rapture? Yeah. And how are you prepared for it? I've I've been saved. I uh, I live every single day trying to like listen to you, listen to um, others alike that preach the gospel, and and, and what do my does best to, what does the rapture look like for you? And how will you know it? It looks blissful for me. How will you know? I don't when know. It? I have my faith. That's why I know it. Oh, and so I you, mean, I don't. There's there are no facts for it. Or do you want just faith? I mean, that's. Do you do you believe it's possible to be in the rapture right now? I mean, uh, from my understanding, the rapture comes after um, God takes the His will, correct? So after God takes what? I know that after God takes what? His holy people. What? He comes and takes His holy people into heaven. Oh, and so. You don't think it's don't possible to be in nothing. the rapture? <laughs> <laughs> you don't think it's possible to be in the rapture right now? If you wanted to, you could be into it right now. You believe that possible? Um, I mean, I, I suppose, yeah. I I believe God is capable of anything. So, and like I said, I'm not a. I'm not a philosopher on the Bible or God's way or anything. I'm just doing my best as a new Christian to find my way in this belief. Right, I understand reaching that. Reaching out to you and other people. I understand that. Hopefully looking for some kind of clarification. You know? How do you feel about what you see happening in the world right now? I hate I, I mean, absolutely not hate in the world, it. but in, like, my, in, it, in my country, America. How do you feel about what you, what well, do you think about what you see happening? In the country right now, the whole well, country. I, I feel like um, I feel like the left are are full of demonic spirits, if I can put it the simplest way. <laughs> I feel like those people are evil. I feel like they want to separate races. They want to keep racism alive by constantly shoving it down everyone's throat. 
they're doing everything they can to keep families separated, to keep fathers out of household, to pay for mother's food, to pay for this, pay for that, so they don't need a man in the household. Everything they're doing is perpetuating the cycle more and more and more, and we blame ourselves instead of blaming the people who are controlling it do you, because we're too blind to notice what they're doing. Do you believe that the right is better than the left? I do a little bit. Not by much, but I do a little bit, and that's because what I know there's only two oh. parties, so he had to vote, He had to go for one, but Trump is a— at least he's on the Republican side. I know he's more Republican than he is Democrat. And that can't possibly be a bad thing, as good as that man is. Right. Now, I'm not talking about Trump, but do you believe that the right is better than the left? No. And so it's nope. not just the Absolutely left that's not. bringing all this on. The right is doing it, too. I know, but I don't see the right really condoning and pushing this progressive agenda like LGBTQ and trans and, and promoting what, hate what, speech when you like I don't see the right the right doing that the left is doing that and what is the right doing to stop it nothing absolutely not so they so if they're not doing anything to stop it it's because they're pushing it as hard as the left uh yeah um yeah i guess i mean yeah i guess you're right they're but, just not outlandish uh, and in your face with it because they be, and the reason for that be, it is in your face you just don't see it because in your mind you think the right you think the left is the one that's really pushing because that's where you your focus is, but mm-hmm. you're, you're not focused on the right. You're not seeing the whole picture. And the ones on the so-called right, they are pushing it all, everything as bad as the, uh, as it's equal to what the left is doing. And it's like the left is looking at the right, so they don't see what the left is doing. And the right is looking at the left, and the left don't see what the right is doing. But if you don't look at the left or the right, you would see the whole picture. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. In what I, way I, does I, it make I, sense? I found very, I, like I said, I found very little of things you say that don't make sense. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the right is no different, man. They are pushing the woman over the men. They are pushing for abortion. They are pushing for open borders. They are pushing for... Ukraine money us for us to give Ukraine more money. They're pushing yeah, for how, um, abortion. I don't, mean, like, I don't mean to. How uh, how do you think the immigration is going? This uh, over flooding of immigrant immigrants is going to affect the election. You think? I I, I, I know what I believe is happening, and I kind of it goes along with what they did in the last election, um, twenty twenty election. But well, I don't. What, do I don't think? know. I don't know what's going to happen, but I, um, I'm having a way to see. My, my thing is I would like to see the great white hope come back. And if he comes back, if, if he gets back, then we will have, well, I already have peace. But for those who don't have peace, they'll have a little bit of peace. It still won't be whole, but at least they'll be able to right. have, at least they will have jobs and the economy would get better, taxes would go down, and uh, the illegals would be shipped back to where they came from. So in a physical sense, in a physical sense, they will, things will get a little better, but it's still, it, my country is messed up forever. And I just yeah. got a text from a friend, he said, Republicans are 10 times worse than the Democrats. What people don't know is that the Republican uh, are as bad or worse than the left, and the left see it from the Republican side, but the Republican yep. voters don't see it from the re- re- Republican side because they're just looking at the left. But when, the you, left. It, but when you really think right. about it, Josh, think about the last four years. The Republicans haven't changed anything, one thing for Ooh. this country, and they have gone along with everything that the Democrat want because they agree with them. The Republicans don't care about the Republican voters, zero. 
Just like the Democrats. I know, don't and, care. Uh, and you are, I mean, you're absolutely right, but they're also, and I don't know how big of a factor it does make, but whoever is in power has ultimate power. They have, they can shut down meetings, they can postpone. No, they um, don't. Uh -uh. Dates. They don't have ultimate power, no such thing. Well, the Republicans don't want to, they don't, they want, they think about themselves, they're not thinking about the, the voters. Republican voters, they're against Donald Trump. They're against shutting down the borders. I remember there was a um, a guy from New York that ran and he won, a Republican. What was his name? And, they, and the Republican ran them all? Uh, George Santos. Joyce Santos. And the oh, Democrat yeah. was like, oh, George Santos lied. He did this, he did that. And, and he got in, and, and the, the Democrat like, we want him out, we want him out. The Republican helped to get him out. But whereas the Democrat representative, they lie all the time, going and yeah. coming up and down, in and out, and around and about. They lie all the well, time. So it seems, but Republicans yeah, so don't. It seems they, that, what? Awesome. So, it's, so it seems like we're we just have absolutely no control. So what do what do we control, Jesse? What are good question? What do we do? We just put our faith in God, and what <laughs> what do we control? What are we supposed to control to help benefit us? Overcome the world. You got to start overcome living from within, and overcome the world, and don't expect anything good from the world. The world is evil. Human beings are evil. Don't expect anything from the world, and you'll be fine. You will be at peace no matter what's happening outside of you. And, and the world can be falling apart. The country can be fighting one another as they are and everything. But uh -huh. you will be at peace. You got to overcome the world by dropping the anger, staying out of your imaginations, your ego, and you'll be free in a, in a dark, evil world. You'll be in heaven well, right I here on earth. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Josh, amazing call, man. Call me again. I appreciate you. Awesome. Appreciate talking to you, Jesse. Keep doing what you're doing. I will, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. The world, the country is not going to change. The human beings are evil. Y'all don't know how evil human beings are. Y'all know something is wrong. Something's on my mind. Super chat. Over on buymeacoffee.com, no mo thoughts slash JLP talk, of course. No mo thoughts bought a coffee. Thank hey, you. Jesse, I forgave my parents about a year ago when as expected. I was scared, almost talked out of it, and spoke like a mouse. Everything seemed to take a turn for good. But just a few days ago when I was visiting, they caught me off guard <laughs> and made a scene where everybody was yelling in frustration about nothing. I told them I have stuff to do after I noticed what was happening. <laughs> yeah. Went to continue working in the garage. Should I just stay away from them completely since they try to drag drag anger out of me? Absolutely. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Absolutely. You have you don't owe them in you have no obligation to go around them, period. Unless you just want to go. You in control of your own world. Why not live from your own world? Take control of your own world. I wish you well. Thank you. Uh, white Lion bought a coffee. Kalergi plan. The Zionist strategy to eliminate the white race by forced migration to majority white nations. It's your beloved Jews, Jesse. The lawlessness that's funded by George Soros. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Someone bought a coffee. Jesse, what do you think about fathers being in the delivery room when the baby is being born? Was it always the way? What about men going to baby showers? When I was growing up, ain't no way in the world you would have even heard of a man going to a baby shower. Any male, any male that goes to a baby shower, you're a beta. But you're weak. And when the uh, baby was being born, even though when I, growing up, uh, every child I know was born at home. You didn't know that? Mm -mm, I didn't know that. Yeah. How far away was the hospital? Or did you guys have hospitals? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were hospitals uh, up there, Hurstburg, down in Eufaula. I don't think Hurstburg had a hospital at the time. But in Eufaula, 
but they had midwives. Right. And the midwife would come and deliver the baby. And every time they would tell us to get out the room. Even what the? They would tell the father, the all the men to leave the room, and we have to go in the living room. So you'd still be in the house? Yep. And she'd be in the bedroom had the baby. So you'd be, you would hear the <laughs> screams? i hear the baby go, Oh, you didn't hear the complaining of the woman? Once in a while, you would hear the one, but in those days, women were tough, and they didn't have medication to take the pain away, and they weren't screaming and carrying on like they do today. Huh. Because the women were tougher then. Nice. They had the baby naturally. Right on. But we didn't go to the hospital. All, all Everybody I know were born at home. Wow. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> do they still have midwives? Yeah. It's it's coming back. It's becoming a trend. I bet the midwives are weak now, too. If it's a trend. Trend. Probably. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, Evgeny Crosby with a couple diamonds. You know it's bad for the Democrats when Donald Trump is getting cheered in Harlem. Amazing. Thank you. Let me take a break. The hate news is coming up. Not the fake news, but the hate news. And I'll be back in a moment to complete your super chats and your phone calls. All right, 888-77-JESSE, back in a moment. I recommend you get a copy of my book, From Rage to Responsibility. I write about how the spirit of anger was taken away from me 29 years ago. I forgave my mother who tried to turn me away from my father, and I returned to my father, and through him, my father on earth, and through him, I was able to return to God. No man or woman can return to God unless you go through the sun. And men are sons of God. They may be weak, pathetic examples of it, but it's the spiritual order of life. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. So get from race to responsibility. I write about that. Go to my website, rebuildingtheman.com for an autograph copy or call 800-411-BOND. And donate to my nonprofit, Bond, the Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. We are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. <laughs> a whole lot of mess going on in the world. This is the end of hour one already of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It's Wednesday, April 17th, AD 2024. There is uh, one line open. You can call in right now. During hate news, not fake news, uh, Women's Forum is tomorrow night, ladies, third Thursday of the month. That is April 18th, 2024, Thursday, 7 p.m. at Bond in Los Angeles. You can go to rebuildingtheman.com slash events, rebuildingtheman.com slash events if you need more info. But just join us at Bond or join Jesse at Bond. Rebuildingtheman.com slash events or call 1-800-411-2663 if you need more info. 1-800-411-BOND. Storms are blowing through. A powerful storm system capable of unleashing damaging tornadoes barreling through parts of the Midwest. Forecasts show the most significant threat today extends from Mississippi to Michigan. Around 50 million people under severe storm threats. So watch out, people. Be safe. January Sixers in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Courts are weighing in on this January 6th fallout from 2021 where they pretended like, oh, it was an insurrection. Yesterday, the so-called Supreme Court heard arguments on key, a key federal charge. It's been used in hundreds of cases, 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 tied to the Capitol, mostly peaceful protest, part of which turned into a riot. They called it riots, as if there were multiple riots. The Justice Department, the Injustice Department, charged more than 300 people with obstruction, saying they tried to stop the 2020 election certification. One former police officer says the DOJ overstepped and misused the felony charge. Now his case has uh, reached the so-called Supreme Court. If justices rule against the Department of Ju Injustice, the anti-white, anti-Trump, anti-Christian DOJ, Hundreds of people could see their obstruction charges cleared, including our greatest president, Donald J. Trump, who faces two obstruction car charges in one of his criminal cases, so-called criminal cases. Supreme Court is expected to issue its decision in June. 
Speaking of the high court, Justice Sup- Clarence Thomas, the one true Supreme Court justice, was back on the bench after being MIA, missing in action, per the far-left Guardian, absent on Monday with no explanation. He was back on Tuesday. He did st- still participate in the cases. 75-year-old justice was also uh, not participating remotely, so the people are speculating. Uh, Clarence Thomas, by the way, is facing criticism from lamos like Jeffrey Tubin of CNN, Comedy Nonsense Network, and that extremist, fat, black, wild-haired Ellie Mistal, who's been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show two or three times, like 10 years ago. He, uh, hate, white hater, by the way. Uh, that's according to the far-left Newsweek. Reportedly, Clarence Thomas was minimizing the events that took place J6, By minimizing, they mean accurately and fairly portraying it in context. There have been many violent protests that have interfered with proceedings, said Justice Thomas during the hearing. Has the government applied this provision to other protests in the past? Where they interrupted, obstructed an official proceeding? Good question, Clarence Thomas. And speaking of kangaroo courts, Trump is on trial. Seven jurors seated Tuesday in the panel that will decide our greatest president's guilt or innocence in the New York, of all places, so-called hush money case. The jurors include two lawyers, a nurse, an IT consultant, and a teacher. All have either said or implied they can be fair or impartial. Nice. A panel of 12 New Yorkers and likely six alternates will be chosen, ultimately. Trump's charged with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records for his alleged role in a hush money scheme for before the 2016 election. The courtroom is dark today. Jury selection will resume tomorrow, Thursday, Bible Thumper Thursday, by the way, with a new panel of 96 prospective jurors who could end up on the jury panel. What a mess. Peace in the Middle East. Not the U.S. plans to impose new sanctions targeting Ir- Iran, Iran after their unprecedented barrage of aerial strikes on Israel, mostly unsuccessful on the weekend, which I think they knew that it was going to be unsuccessful. They had to do it to save face, according to some people speculating or analyzing the situation. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. Uniting the race is with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. Manhood, I was coming up, coming up in the third hour. You can get involved. There's one line open at 888-7753-773. 888-77-JESSE. My biblical question for this week. And it's a doozy. Do you have a fear of criticism? Do you have a fear of criticism? An amazing question. If you're busy working out, making breakfast, lunch, and dinner, on your way to work, at the beach, or whatever you're doing, or you're black and you're down at City Hall trying to make complain and you're illegal alien and you're complaining that the shelters are not nice enough for you and that's a black experience and it ain't good and you force your way here you can be listening to the show too you can broadcast but you can be listening on the listen line by calling 641-793-1500-641-793 one five zero zero, and to donate to have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com dot com slash JLP Talk. 
buymeacoffee.com slash jlptalk or rebuildingdemand.com. Rebuildingdemand.com. Before I go, so in the first hour just now, you can podcast, uh, we were talking about the Republican Party with Josh out of, what was Josh from Florida? Ohio. I believe it was from Ohio. I think so. Um, about how there's no difference in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, the Liberal Party or Conservative Party, and they're both the same. But if you are a conservative, you have identified with being a conservative, you're just going to look at what the liberal are doing. But if you are a liberal, you're just going to look at what the conservatives are doing, and they're both doing the same thing. Nothing to help America, right? Because they're about themselves. But if you don't identify with either, you'll still see the right way to vote and all that, but you won't be thinking that the Republican Party is better than the Democratic Party or the Democratic Party is better than the Liberal Party, blah, blah, blah. You will see that they are both the same. There's no different. And you smoke on it. The Republicans have done nothing but work along with the Democrats, and they have hid behind the Democratic Party pretending that they were better. And they were for whatever the Democrats are for. They were lying. And then even in the liberal media, not all, no, no, they're pushing liberal women, women in the same way they're pushing the women in the conservative media. And pay attention. They are pushing women in the churches, in the, liberal, in the conservative media, conservative so-called experts. It's all about the woman. But if you're just looking at the liberals, you won't really pay attention to what they're doing. It's time to wake up. A friend of mine texted me, he said, Republicans are 10 times worse than the Democrats. It is not really a bad choice. Oh, uh, I guess he meant bad choice, I don't know. And then before we went to break, and I want to ask Hank about that, I talked about the, uh, in the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, women were tougher back then. And when they had babies, they they had midwives. They didn't have to go to a hospital and take medication and to ease the pain and all that stuff that they use now for the doctors to use to make money. It's all about the money, right? And the women had the baby in the bedroom. What the? And so they had midwives. And, that, and my friend said, that's a good point. Women were tough then and had babies naturally. Not women need drugs and C-sessions. What's going on? Everybody and a mama having a C-session. It's about the money. Money, money, money. A C-session costs more than to just open up your legs and let the baby come out. James, were you born at home? This is Hate from the Hate Report and an expert here on the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. Were you born at home? Nope. What? No. Why not? <clears throat> I was born at the hospital, presumably because my my mother trusted the doctors. <laughs> the doctors were pretty trustworthy in the in the eighties, early eighties, right? No? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In the suburbs. And uh, so you, do you know anyone who was born at home? Uh, I've met one child who was, a, who was the daughter of a college friend of mine who was born at home. So, yes. Oh. I met one. The beauty about being and born. You. And me? <laughs> yeah, I was born at home. Thank God. <laughs> and the beauty about being born at home, if you were born retarded or something, the mother would have to keep you. Oh, yeah. And she didn't mind. And then if it looked like the baby was not going to survive, the mother and the father still kept, kept the baby. And if the baby died, they just had the funeral and the baby was gone. Isn't that nice? No abortions. Right. Nice. That's what love is. You deal with what you get. Well, that's right. Amazing. That's cool. So last thing, then I got to go back. 
We need to finish those two. We had two super chats left. We have a few more now. Okay. Did you, uh, before that conversation I just had with uh, Josh, were you aware that the Republican Party and the Democratic Party were the same? There's no difference. And that the Republican had, in four years, uh, even before that, but definitely four years, they have not done anything to make America great again. Zero. I kind of... I, I kind of know that. I mean, I know that there's intellectually you can be like, oh, well, they pretend, at least pretend to stand for what's right. But, they but were, it is just a pretense. Yeah. And they were saying one thing. They were going along. They went along with everything the Democrat wanted to go along with. I saw the so-called Republican leader the other day say, oh, we need to get the passage path, but we got to include Ukraine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard, too. So can you name me one thing that the Republican did that the Democrats didn't do in the last four years? Um, uh, not, not anything good that I can think of. I don't pay that much attention, though. All I read is CNN headlines. No, no, that's a time clock waiting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what? I said, no, I can't, but I'm not. I'm not an expert on that stuff because they're boring. Who? The Republicans. Have you? Can you name one thing that Republicans stopped the Democrats from doing since in the last four years? Mm, I don't. I don't think so. Because the Republicans are with the Democrats. They're not with the Republican voters. Yeah. They don't even want Donald Trump back. The Republicans. True. And or the, uh, some of them who do are bandwagoners and who all, just want right. just for their own selves, their own egos. They're pretending. And the only reason they're pretending that they want Donald Trump back because they know the Republican voters want Donald Trump. Right. So they're going to have so to get on and shape up or ship out. Right. So they stay there and pretend to, so they want to stay in office. Yeah. But the Republicans are no different. True. And have you noticed that the so-called conservative Republican Christian women, non-Christian women, but Repu- conservative women, they're for women. They're not for men. I have noticed that. And they push it just as hard as the liberal women do. Yeah, they're just full of ego, selfishness, pride. It's all the same. Standing. It's all the same. Yeah. But if you take sides, like you say, I'm a Republican then you're just going to go along with the Republicans and not see what they're not doing. I won't see that Marjorie Greene is not such a queen. Right. <laughs> Terrible. I, and when, I, when she first came on the scene, I thought she was tough. She was like going after the Democrats. But I don't know one thing she succeeded at. No, even I think her, even her marriage and family's kind of falling apart. Oh, yeah? I think that that's what I heard. She ain't got a bit of work and she needs to be at home with the family. Yeah, I agree with that. So wake up, America. Stop identifying with anything or anyone. Then you can see. Any last comment? Rest in peace, America. Yeah, because it's dead. But there will always be a remnant, just Mm -hmm. like with, with God, with the Israelites in the Bible. So shout out to the remnant. What's a remnant? The remnant is like the, there's like a section of people who are seeking God and they yeah. have the real American spirit still. I don't even know what the American spirit is anymore. <laughs> They're there. They're there, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Um, oh, her husband divorced her. Uh, recently or something? Uh, back in September 2022, he filed. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, you can, I, That's why I tell men, never marry a woman that's educated. She wanted to move on back in 2012, according to Brave AI summary, e- no, news summary. Educated women do not make for good wives and mothers. Yeah. It's impossible. Because they, they, they think they got to be out there like the man. Runaway ego. Yeah. Um, one last thing, and yes. then I'm going to take some calls. 
we were, Josh and I were talking about the end time, that he's still waiting for the, you know, he was a Christian anyway for the end time. Uh, um, are you waiting for the end time too? Well, I, I don't, was. Don't say what I said about it at this time, but are you still waiting? I was. I wanted to be raptured so I wouldn't have to die. I wanted to be raptured. I wanted the rapture to come and so that I wouldn't ever have to die. Oh, you had that mindset? Uh-huh. Really? And since being a kid. As a kid, you wait for the rapture? Not that I was waiting for it, but I was like hoping it would happen in my lifetime so I wouldn't die. But it didn't happen in your lifetime. Wait. My <laughs> lifetime is still going, hopefully. <laughs> so far. I'm still living. I'm still alive, <laughs> but I'm barely breathing. Still alive, but I'm barely breathing. I pray to a God that I do believe in. Well, they say I don't believe in. I got time, but she got freedom. You know, when a heart breaks, no, it don't break even, even. Um, Are you still waiting for the rapture? Uh, maybe. Maybe you wait for the rapture? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't really think about it anymore. Oh, you don't? Right. So you you ain't waiting there. You're not thinking. True. Oh, good. Don't let your parents know that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they were watching those Left Behind movies. <laughs> and I didn't really watch them. I was busy. Have you ever seen... In all of the times that you've seen, and I was thinking about this this morning for some reason, it just crossed my mind. In all of your uh, your life, when you be watching those Christian movie about Jesus carrying the cross and and uh, Jesus' life and how you were going about healing people and blah blah blah, have you ever seen a, a real Jesus, or has it always been an emotional weak Jesus? Have you ever seen like a tough Jesus? In a movie. Sometimes it, for there would be moments of toughness, but for the most part, it would always be kind of like this this uh, overly emotional portrayal of different situations. It would be emotional. So even with, in the older days, well, you're not necessarily from the older days. But I did but see some of those older things. I don't really remember Have you back ever then. seen a tough Jesus in any movie? Not that I recall. Me either. Even the, uh, well, I don't know. I can't, you know how we, I saw a Passion of the Christ. Right. But that was just mostly of him getting beat up. Right. It still was of him being tough. Yeah. I've never, when you read the Bible, they show a tough Jesus in the Bible. True. But when you see the movies. And unpredictable. The, when you see the Christian mu movie, yeah, unpredictable. And when you see the Christian movies about Jesus during uh, the Christmas times or whatever they show them, they're always weak. Yeah. Because I think they're based on how they feel, and they think that's how Jesus felt. And that's been a long time. They show him carrying the lamb. Right. <laughs> Knocking gently on your door. I know. Well, he's and not to do now. And <laughs> Terrible. And um, everything's all messed up. Yeah. No wonder society's so weak. Her son said, chosen Jesus, kind of. Kind of tough? Kind of tough. How's he kind of tough? He's real nice. <laughs> <laughs> Joel agrees he's real nice, or Joel agrees he's kind of tough in the chosen? Yeah, I think he's. He's pretty, you know. Do you know think he's firm? <laughs> yeah, well, if he's is firm. that firm, don't get show me nice. Joel's <laughs> tough. Hey, come on. <laughs> but in the chosen, you like Jesus because he's nice. Yeah, he's nice, but he he's a little tougher than most of the depictions I I would say over the past. I like the movie Chosen. Yes, I did like the movie uh, TV show. I mean, the, the TV show, but it was a series, right? But I still thought Jesus was really a likable, nice person. Which is not right. Even though he, right, it just dawned on me later, like, Jesus was <laughs> weak. What were you saying, Hassan? No, I mean, I guess you're right. No, hey, no, no. Someone should make, like, a, 
Like a Trump Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Jesus I'm looking for. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> One that everybody's like. Yeah. Divided over. Yeah. And they like him and then they turn on him because he doesn't do what, what they, they thought that they were mind reading him. Right. To be like what they wanted him to be. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, no. We need a Trump Jesus. <laughs> and so are you saying the chosen Jesus was nice and weak or strong? Hassan? I think he's at least a little tougher than the past 20 years depictions. In what way? You know, he's kind of being, he's being direct. He's being, um, there's moments where he's being, yeah, he's being, he's standing, he's standing firm, I think. He's pretty tough. There's tough moments in there. Like what? <laughs> Joel said he was gentle and tough. <laughs> <laughs> he can't be gentle and tough, Joel. What the? How, what was he? Firm but fair, says Sean. How was he firm? He was firm like when he told, uh, when he told, uh, he was telling the disciples some stuff. I can't hear you. I don't know exactly, but he, he was firm. There's lots of moments. Like I'll what? pull it up for a compilation. So out of lots of moments, you can't think of one. Well, because I don't know the exact... I, I remember when he was telling two of the disciples, like, who are you to... for You know, you want you want me to, uh, th f you know, fire these people or, like, get angry at these people? Who are you to, you know, you're no better? Like, he yelled at them, kind of. <laughs> 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 you may be on I'm a, I, I just over, I remember him being likable. I really like Jesus. Sean says he was doing the Father's will, whether you like it or not. So I, I truly enjoyed the movie. That's why I recommended it. And I like Jesus in the movie, but when I reflect, I've never seen a tough Jesus, like a, like a Trump Jesus. Trump is like Jesus. That's right. Trump will make a good Jesus. <laughs> You agree? Well, I, I think we should do like a, yeah, we should have someone like a Trump Jesus or a Jesse Jesus. There definitely needs to be another depiction. I agree. <laughs> right. Let's get it going. Get my, I'll direct it. Get my granddad to play Jesus. <laughs> I bet everybody go sit down there. <laughs> All babies born at home. Everybody, that's right. <laughs> everybody obey Jesus. Am I going to care if the plow run over your foot or not? He ain't gonna take you to no doctor. He's not gonna feel bad for you, and he he, he still gonna apply that feel. What the? <laughs> anyway, let's do the quick super chat thing, and then we we'll go back to the car. Okay. Super, super, super. super. Aries one with the diamond no message. Thank you. Thank you. Vinny bought a coffee. Is Joel the long lost son of Jesse? They both have the same gestures. Joel's black, but he does look mixed sometimes. That means Jesse must have had a nice white woman back in the pre-civil rights movement days. How did he make that happen? What the amazing. Love the show. I, when I first came to L.A., I went to college for one year, a city college, L.A., Los Angeles City College. In the and, 60s? Yeah. And I only went because I wanted to see what's true about white women. And so I did meet a white woman. We did our thing. I think Joel came from that. Yeah. Because I never saw her again. And, and then Joel popped up. She, her pregnancy was on hold until the 90s. I think that's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Joel said, I knew it. She was pregnant for 25 years, and then Joel was born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or she was born, she moved to Louisiana because she, it was embarrassing to be pregnant out yeah. of wedlock. And so she moved to Louisiana, and that's where she had Joel. Was that in Shreveport? That's why Joel looked all freckled. Right. It was in, it was in Swebaport. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Sean, yeah. you ever seen a real tough Jesus in a movie? We have a picture of one. Come to the mic. Oh, you this is my producer, Sean, and an expert here on the Justin Peterson show. You ever seen a real tough Jesus in a movie? Um, the only movie about Jesus 
or show I've ever seen was The Chosen. That was the first oh, really? depiction of Jesus or anything I've ever seen. Were you raised a Christian? No. <laughs> oh, was, you were raised a flat earther? Uh, no. Not that either. Around, is that Jesus? That's Jesus. That's Jesus. Trump, Trump, Trump Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's that's Trump. the tough one. <laughs> that's the Jesus I want. I thought you were going to show the muscular one where he's breaking the wings of the cross. That's the Jesus we need on his earth. <laughs> Where's his fingers? He looks, more, he looks a little, a touch older than 33, although they did age faster back then, right? Oh, he's got, he's got six on his left hand and four on his right. Oh. oh, that's AI stuff. Yeah, they AI. mess up fingers sometimes. Why? And his eyes are two different colors, too. Yeah, I want the Trump-looking Jesus. Amazing! He's too old. <laughs> Who made right? this? Well, that's Trump Jesus. Right. Was but this from too... your input? Jesus never got that old. Well, right. Ageless. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Trump. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Amazing! Thank you for that. That Jesus, that looked tough. So, in it, oh, you you only saw the chosen. Yeah, yeah. Were you born at home? No, I was born in a hospital. Why? Um. Well, I think it is safer. It's safer in, in a hospital. In what way? Because if the baby comes out and the baby has some sort of issues that require immediate care. And there's things that only doctors can do that they, that people can't do in a home. But how come it worked during the good old days where you could be born at home and they took care of whatever issue? I mean, it worked for the people who it worked for. But if a baby came out back in the day with some sort of issue that required a doctor's care and it didn't get it immediately, I'm sure there were babies back in the day born at home that didn't survive. Like who? Just assuming. Assuming. That's right. Yeah, I do know some stillborn babies too. But I, I don't know if the doctor could have brought it. Because the midwife was as good as the doctor. Did you know any mothers who died in child, giving childbirth? No. They were too tough. The baby would die first. Hey. That's but, messed up. Yep. You hear they took a poll in... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they took a poll in California, and they asked people all over the state uh, if illegal immigration was a problem. And 25% of people said, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a major problem. And 75% uh, of people said, no, no es un problema. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're the illegals. <laughs> 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 what? Now, did that happen real? No. What? No, it's a, oh, it's a, it's a good joke, though. It's funny, right? I can see it happening, right? <laughs> Was that the two multiple choice question a answers? When oh, it was in yeah, Spanish. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yep. And you were born in four minutes. I was born quick. I think in like 45 minutes or like, or like an hour, I was quick. You were ready to come out of there? I was ready. And I was a big baby. I was a fat baby. I was seven pounds, 11 ounces, I think. Whoa. Seven, I was, seven, I was seven, eight 11. pounds something. I was 12 pounds. What? Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. No wonder your mama crazy. <laughs> no, <man>. How <laughs> tall were you? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm you ain't crazy, Joy, mama. I'm playing. That's Hassan. I mean, Hassan, mama. <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> and how tall were you? Oh, how many sure. inches? Me? Sean. Him. Oh. Yo, Sean, let's hey, Sean, I'm not sure. You're not sure? No. I wasn't tall till late in high school. I was a sh short little scrawny kid for a long time. Yeah, Amazing. I just recently got tall. Okay. <laughs> so much for that. Did we do the super chat? No, we have several more. Okay. JV the Great with three coffees on buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. I can see what you mean by Republicans are just as bad as the Democrats. However, do you believe that it's because more rhinos in the GOP and zero representatives in the D Democrat Party that would side with the Republicans? Democrats have been evil since its creation. Republicans came in with great intentions. However, over time, they just got too saturated with rhinos. This makes me question if the party's really switched. Though the Dem Party didn't switch at all, they just switched up their tactics and started adding black faces to do their bidding. But the Republican Party are doing the same thing. They're adding black faces, too, to do their bidding. Yeah. They're totally adding black faces to do their bidding. 
They're adding women to do their bidding. They're doing exactly what the Democrats are doing. Are doing. And they're sending money to Ukraine. They are not shutting down the border. They want cheap labor. It's the same thing. They don't want Donald Trump. Be not deceived. The Republicans do not want Donald Trump. And as James mentioned, those who do want him, they just ride on a coattail. I think there were was definitely evil in both parties for them to be able to go to war. What do you think about that, Sean? What was the question? The Republican Party no different than the Democrat. Yeah, it's it's bureaucracy is the name for it. It's bureaucracy. It's way too many people and too many yeah. regulations and too many too many levels. You know, so. And, um, yeah, that's what it is. Bu- bu- bureaucracy. Bureaucracy mean what? Too big of a government? Yeah, like there's too many, too many levels. Yeah. You know, there's just way too many, too many people in the party or in the government or both in the whole in the whole world. You know, every every business, every um, every government institution. But do you see our Republican Party no different than the Democratic Party? Yeah, they don't. They vote for everything the Democrats vote for. They want money for Ukraine. Yeah. They want illegal aliens here. They want the same thing. Yeah. Look at Mike. Look at Mike Johnson, this uh, supposed, you know, very good Christian man. The new guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. He can't get anything done. All he does is, you know, make these bills. And then the 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 big complaint is that with these bipartisan omnibus bills, is that they have too many things going on at once. There's no single issue bills. Yeah. That, that we can vote on. I'm just going to vote for Donald Trump. I ain't vote for nothing else. Yeah. Just Trump. Okay. Uh, the key bought a coffee. Biblical question and answer. Do you, feel, do you fear do you, criticism? Yeah. Do you have a fear of criticism? No, I don't fear criticism. I see criticism as a tool, double-edged sword, if you will. Tells you a lot about the deliverer of the criticism. The message that's intended for you cuts the deliverer just the same. I discern criticism and I welcome feedback. Nice. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. Thank you. Let me take a break. And uh, when I come back, your phone call. Thank you. And we will finish the Super Chat. Back in a moment. We have a counseling service. And I have to admit... Thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy, they're miserable, they have rough lives, they're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand, I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingdemand.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. The um, 888-775-3773. The Hake Report is coming up at 9 a.m. from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And then uh, after the Hake Report, Joel Fry to TV, he black. And from 11 to 12, and then the American Anchor Baby. The American Anchor Baby at 12 
noon Pacific time. You don't want to miss those shows. And for personalized shout outs, go to Cameo, C A M E O, and I will do them for you. Wedding shout out, congratulations, encouragement, birthdays, whatever the occasion is. C A M E O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. And last but least, check out our store at rebuildingtheman.com slash store. Rebuildingtheman.com slash store. While you're there, make a donation as well. I want to go to um, Joey, a first time caller out of Am I Crooked Letter, Crooked Letter, I Crooked Letter, Crooked Letter, I Hump by Hump by I, Mississippi. Joey, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. You're welcome. I can't hear you. No, I'll wait for you. Oh, you're waiting for me? Yes, sir. Yes. I loved about what you talked about the other day about the, the Godhead. Yes. How the man is over the woman. I believe that. And how you talked about going to go repent or ask forgiveness from your mother. And well, make it, well, don't ask forgiveness. Apologize for resenting her. Right. But uh, I can't do that. My mom has already passed away last year. Right. And so I'm going to teach my daughter this, what you say, to make it right with her mom. So yes. that I can, she can make it right with me. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to talk about a little bit about, you know, I know that you were... Uh, born in Alabama, you were on a plantation, and you were under the Jim Crow law. The way I look at the Civil Rights Movement was something planned by socialism years ago to take a race of people and to make them into something. And then here we are now, 60 years later, and it's just not blacks, but it's white, Hispanics, and everybody that wants this free stuff. So the government will take their to take them over. I believe this was a plan to start with one generation and involved in slave the whole people of the United States under socialism. I agree, Joey. That's what the civil rights movement was all about. The civil rights movement was the worst thing that ever happened yes, sir. to the blacks other than abortion, but it was also one of the worst things that's ever happened in this country. Because it's been downhill ever since. We're more divided than any other time. The blacks, not all, not all, not all, but most of them are whining and begging and blaming, even 70 years later. So they haven't gotten better. It was a socialist program with the intent to control the people. I totally yes, agree. Sir. I also believe, uh, like you say about anger, if you have anger, you have hate. You have anger, you have what? You have hate. Absolutely. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that with all my heart. I mean, I've been born again, and uh, I don't believe in a rapture. <laughs> 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 the simple reason is because he talks about the farmer and it, where the enemy came and planted the tares in the field, and he said to let them grow up. And then the later, who was taken first? The tares. The wicked was taken out first. And the saints were left. Amazing. And all we have to do is make it to the other side through whatever we're going through, and we will reign with the Messiah for a thousand years on this earth and take control of the wicked. So why do you think the Christians are still waiting for the rapture? Or end because time? that's a made-up word by the Roman Catholic Church. Oh. Around probably, you know... They've been around since the Council of Nicaea 325 A.D. As far as I care, these pictures of Jesus or whoever they say he is, the Messiah, he does not look like a woman. All them pictures make him look feminine. Yeah, they make him look weak. Exactly. I don't have none of them pictures in my house. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> what a mess. Joey, thanks yeah. for your call, man. Amazing call. I appreciate it, and you're absolutely right about all that. Uh, let me talk to your uh, person online when I get off with you. I want to get some T-shirts and cups. Oh, okay. And that's my friends. Nice. Because it's amazing. <laughs>
Amazing. Thank you, man. Hold on. I'm going to give you. me back to Sean. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. All right, buddy. Uh, Sean, pick it up. Um, let me go to Harold out of North Carolina. Harold, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thank you for taking my call, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the, that shooting in Chicago where this young young black man with a gun supposedly shot at the police officers 11 times before they shot and killed him. Well, that's the guy and, in the car? Yeah, that was the guy in the car. And, 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 and as a retired police officer and, and looking at the way the criminal justice system is today, what is the big deal about getting a ticket for not having on a seatbelt? You're not going to jail. They don't put people in jail that are killing people. So what is that? What is the urge to get pulled over and start shooting at people? I just don't understand the rationale because you got people in Chicago walking around with murder charges. They have ankle braces on. Uh, so you're asking why did they have to shoot him? No, 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 sir. I'm not saying. No, they, they did what they were supposed to do. My question is, if you're getting pulled over for a seatbelt, it's not that serious. Oh, I see. And so, it's not that it, serious. You got people in Chicago and all across this country, Mr. P P Patterson, with Peterson. late ankle monitors on who have committed murder. Yeah. And so you're saying that why did the guy not just stop and do what the cops said if it was just for a seatbelt instead of, uh, according to a report, he starts... He wouldn't let the window down at one time. He started right. shooting, shooting all that. When a seatbelt well, is, is no big deal with all the other stuff that's going on around him. And supposedly, supposedly he had um, a, he had a firearm in the car. Maybe that's why he, he was hesitant to, to comply. But my thing is this. They just locked up that white family, that mother and father in Michigan, for, for their son having a gun yeah. and shooting up their school. Don't you think that woman... The mother of that young man, and, and, and rest in peace, I don't wish any ill will towards any young man. I was, a, I was a cop for 20 years, and the last thing I would, my biggest fear, Mr. Pitt Patterson, was having a confrontation it's, with a young black male. Yeah, it's, Peter, it's Peterson. Fear. It's Peterson, not I'm Patterson. Sorry, Peterson. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. No problem. That was my biggest fear, sir, having a deadly confrontation with a young black male. And, and why, is that? why is that? Why is that? I understand already, but I want to hear you say it. Well, first of all, if if you shoot and kill one of these young black men, they're going. Everybody's going to be a Monday morning quarterback. Well, why didn't you do this? Yeah. You couldn't de-escalate. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. I have little respect for people that weren't police officers that are commenting and critiquing police officers. If you've never been in a shootout, you can't talk to me about a shootout. Yeah. If you've never been, a, if you've never been in a fight with somebody wearing sixty pounds of gear and a, and a vest, and in the summertime rolling around with somebody out in the middle of the street, you can't critique. You shouldn't be able to critique any police officer until you do the job itself. I agree, man. That's deep. I absolutely agree with that. That's amazing. And I'm tired of every, and every four years, every couple of years, they bring out a new George Floyd. Now, this guy's a martyr. They show, his, they show the pictures of him graduating from school <laughs> and with pictures with mommy. But where, where the mugshots? Because he's got a rap sheet. And uh, according to the report, when they stopped him for the seatbelt thing, as you mentioned, he had a gun in the car with him, and I think they said he had a warrant for carrying a firearm or something like that. You think you think the the city you think the attorney general of the city of Chicago will prosecute the mother like they did those that white family in Michigan? No, ain't no ain't no way that's gonna happen. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. See, and like I said uh, again, this. this Nine times out of ten, sir, the, all this stuff that I watch and I critique because I did the job. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, if you just comply, either you're going to get arrested or you're going to be let, or you're going to be able to walk away. Yeah. I tell all my grandkids and my sons and daughters, if the police pull you over, you are to comply. Yeah. If you have a problem with him, you write, you remember the name, his shield number, you get somewhere safe, and you make a formal complaint on paper. You do not do it at the scene, yelling back and forth, bouncing around, moving. These gentlemen want to go home, too. They got families. That's they right, go man. Home. What a mess. According to Wikipedia, uh, a firearm with a revoke uh, FOID card and three right. counts of aggressive 
aggravated unlawful use of a weapon. He was on parole, I mean, partial release at the time of the shooting. That's according to Wikipedia. But what, the, what, what, what did they what, what they put on Facebook and everything? And in, in, in the news, they, they put his third grade picture. <laughs> what? Well, that's evil, man. That's pure evil to do that. Well, like I said, if, if how well is that defunding the police thing working out? Because more black people got killed in the last three years than the numbers were before they started this defund the police thing. And then most of the people that were yelling about defund the police live in white neighborhoods yeah. with very little crime. It's and I saw them marching and protesting and breaking up stuff in the black communities, but they all left and went back to their communities where they have very little crime and they have the utmost respect for the police. It's all about the money. They don't care about the blacks or anyone else. It's about money and perceived power, and it's about control. They don't care about the blacks. They don't care about the whites. It's all about themselves. It's, what a you, mess. You, you, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And what you said earlier about this country's done, I, I, I agree with you 100%. Because in the last three years, they've let in 25% of the black population in this country illegally. Amazing. 40 million blacks in this country, at least 15, 13 to 15 million illegals have come into this country. That's about 25% of our population. And if they keep that up in another three or four years, it'll be 50% of our, it'll be 20 to 25 million. And there goes your new voting block. There yeah. goes your new welfare recipients. Yeah. There goes your new criminals. you got a whole new system of people that you're going to exploit because they're not educated and they're not smart enough to get educated so they can figure this game out. What a mess. So it's over, man. It's over, Harold. I know. It's a done, it's a done deal. You might as well stick a fork in America. You might <laughs> yeah. Well stick a fork in it. Yeah. And, Her- and, and what you said earlier about Republicans, they're in cahoots, too. Yeah. Both parties are liable for all of this nonsense that's going on because there shouldn't be one bill passed in the House. Right. With a, with a Republican majority. Yeah. Just like yeah. they tied up Trump all the time, there should have been one bill passed when that other guy was... Who's the guy before Johnson? Or what was his name? Um, the oh. Speaker of the House. I can't think of... <laughs> what was his name, Sean, before Johnson? Kevin well, McCa- well, McCarthy. Right, and he, he went along He went along with the... They shouldn't have been one bill passed. First of all, yeah. when the game in office, they should have told Biden... You shut down that border, we're not passing any bills to spend money to do anything. Yeah. They had the leverage to do it. They didn't do it. Just think about that, Harold. They're leaving our borders wide open, letting terrorists and everything come in. While they're, at, they're so concerned about Ukraine, they got to get money to them. They got to help them. They gotta, but they're doing nothing for home, man. Nothing. Zero. Well, I, I have a problem with being thirty-four trillion dollars in debt, and giving anybody money. Yes, me too. I, I, that's to me that that I don't even. First of all, I don't live in Ukraine, and I feel sorry for what they're going through. But that's not my problem. Right. I live in North Carolina, where we have <laughs> there's certain cities in North Carolina I don't go to: Fayetteville, Durham, parts of Charlotte. I won't go there because I don't want any problems with my people. And like I said earlier, the, my biggest fear when I was a police officer was having a deadly confrontation with a young black male. Yeah. You notice I didn't say a young white male. I right. said a young black male. And you are black, right, for the record? Yes, sir. Amazing. <laughs> and uh, I was part of the I was part of them when in the eight I got hired in eighty four when black people were complaining about, oh, we don't have enough black cops. I worked I worked the black precinct. It was the worst it was it, it was constant work. Fights, yeah. shootings, domestics. When I worked, a, not, not, and not that white folks don't act up, but when I worked in the white community, they were glad to see me. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Officer, can I get you some water? If, if, I, if I had a white kid that was acting up and I took him home to his parents, guess what, Mr. Patterson? Didn't happen no more. Yeah. yeah. Didn't happen no more. Oh, man. You take a black kid home to their parents, oh, you picking on my kid and you you ain't got nothing else better to do. Bah, 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 bah. You know, you get, you get the noise instead of, my mother told me at a, at a very young age, Mr. Patterson, if a cop brings you home, you're getting, a, you're getting an ass whooped. <laughs> That's right. My, my, That's they used me. to tell me, if you go to jail, you, I'm not coming to visit. I'm not, no, no money on no books, no phone calls or anything. You're on your own. And that kept me out of jail. And, and you know what bothers me about all these shootings? All the parents, are, they come out of the woodwork when the kid gets shot. But where's the supervision? <laughs> That's right. 
Yeah. Where is the supervision from the time he leaves the door? Excuse me, you going to school? You got a job? What are you, who are you hanging out with? Where is, where is the parental supervision yeah. before these things happen? And that lady was faking. She, 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 orange, uh, yeah, orange weave on, <laughs> and she's passing out. Oh, passing out like she, like passing she didn't out, really know son. her boy. Let me take like a, again. That's the new grift. You get shot by, the, and the, and I feel sorry. These cities shouldn't pay a dime. Yeah. Go Ben Crump has never been to trial in his life. I don't think he's ever tried a case because if he tried one, he wouldn't have been convicted. Yeah, he would have been convicted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been convicted. These 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 municipalities are willing to pay. They pay before they even know what happened. Amazing, yeah. Oh, they're man. gonna give this guy. They're gonna give this guy millions of dollars, and he initiated the shooting. What a shame, Harold. Thank you, man. Amazing, amazing call. I'm glad you got a chance to get it off your chest. Amazing call. Thank you, man. And thank you for taking the call, Mr. Patterson. Have a good day, sir. You, you too, buddy. Amazing. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Let me go to Jason out of Buffalo, New York. Jason, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, what's up, man? All is well. Hey, my question is like the thing you had like the biblical question about sin last week, right? What do you have a fear of criticism? Oh, that's the one for this week. And I like, no, like it, it, Trump does, though. Trump does. Trump has a fear of criticism. You say you Trump don't does. have a fear of criticism? Oh, no, I don't. I don't mind being criticized. I don't like to be told that I, I like to be told that I'm wrong so I can go back and research stuff. I think we talked about this before. And, and have you always been that way? Oh, yes, because like, I like to learn stuff that I learn from my mistakes. I don't like to be wrong. I like to be right a lot. Like your man, your man going to jail, your Trump going to jail. I like to be and, right about stuff. He's going to jail. Amazing. And so, and how do you know he's going to jail? Since you rushing toward Trump. How do you know he uh, going he going to jail? Because he broke the law. That's why he going to jail. What? He break the law. That's what you mean. He broke the law. That's why he going to jail. And what law he did he break? The insurrection. What? The insurrection out of like eighteen twenty some shit. Something that's like that. not what this is about. I mean, that's like I mean, I know it's like obstruction. This is and all not what stuff. this is about. This is about something else. You don't even know oh, what the oh, case oh, is oh, about, but yet oh, you oh, about, oh, you know you, you think, don't oh, even oh. know what the case is about, but you know he's going to jail. Oh no, I was talking about another case. I mean, he got so many. Yeah, he, he got a lot of stuff going on. But I thought you talking about the Stormy Daniels case. He can go to jail for that too. Let him keep running his mouth like that. Let him keep talking all reckless like that. They could throw him in jail for talking reckless. How you know many times have you heard? And I don't know what's going to happen. He How many jail, times have you heard he was going to jail? Oh, no, see, oh, boy, but it's like, yeah, like, in how many cases have you How been many convicted? times have you heard he was going to jail? And, like, how many times have you been in court? How many times have you heard he was going to jail? It is, okay, 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 all right, all right, all right. I'm, all right. I've heard he was going to jail a lot. And, and how many times like, have you seen him in jail? All right, hold on, can, can I explain my first point first before we go to your next question? How many times I, have you seen him in jail? You're not going to let me do that. How many times have I seen him in jail? How many times have you been in court in a situation about to go How to jail? many times have you seen him in jail? Okay, I have not seen him in jail. Okay, I'm going to And play then I'll part. let you say what you said, but how many times okay, have you predicted, oh, he going to jail this time. How many times have you been wrong about him going to jail? Never. Uh, you never been wrong about him going to jail? Never been wrong about him going to jail because he, he, he never had a court trial. Hold on, hold on. He, he hasn't he gone to jail him. yet. I know, but he's never been in a situation where he could go to jail. Where is like the situation where he can go to jail? Oh, he can go to jail. I, I just told you, he can go. Let, let him keep running his mouth. Let him keep talking all reckless like that about them people. <laughs> let him keep doing it. He can go to jail for that. How he is can he go to jail for that. How is he talking <laughs> reckless about it? When he's threatening, like, the DAs and stuff like that, when he's, like, trying to, like, he, they said he was trying to intimidate the jurors and stuff like he that. He hasn't threatened like, anyone. Who did he threaten? Yeah, he hasn't like he hasn't threatened anybody. The dude. But not, you said okay, that many times he's been threatened. Who did no, no, he no, no, threaten? No, no, no. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. You say all right, all right. This is a, all right, this is what's considered a threat. He, this is how you threaten somebody. When he, when Donald Trump being in the situation that he's in, having the power and control of the party that he that he has, when he says something about somebody, the people his underlings, the stupid people, his cult followers. They're going to try to attack the people that he says. How many times? Ha- you just quoting the liberal press, but how many times? No, 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 that's true. That's true. That's true. When did he threaten someone? 
it is like it, it, and again and again when did he threaten somebody okay when he said like something like the you, um you said okay, he okay, threatened I, I, real fast because i gotta run uh, i'm giving you a oh, lot of time boy, today no, where no, is no, it no, where no, did you hear him threaten someone when he said that the people who did like the protesters they would get in, in when he, his day when he if he had his way they would be something would happen to them that is a threat that when did Donald when, Trump threaten someone? Uh, that, that is a threat. That's a threat. That's a threat. Oh, Jason. That's a threat. That when a threat. did that Donald threat. Trump threaten anyone? I just explained it to you. That is a threat. You when said you he threatened somebody in court or some jury or something, a lawyer. Or so, so, when was, did he threaten anyone? So, 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 so be specific with your question. Can you tell me exactly what you want? Like, Because I just gave you a situation where he threatened somebody. No, he didn't threaten anyone. When you say something, when you say, when if I had my way, the people that, like, did, like, the people that are protesting. He didn't threaten anyone, up, Jason. Be, that, that is a threat. No, no that is a, he that, didn't threaten that, anyone. That, so that's not, that's, that's not a threat. That's no, not a threat. That's, not a that's threat. a that's not, promise. Say you do, like, say, no. say you, no, that's a point. <laughs> that's so, not it, a like, threat. Okay, that's a promise. A, There's a difference. So, so, all right, what's the difference but between a threat and a promise? But he didn't even. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Explain me that. What's the difference between a threat and a promise? He never made a threat, Jason. You don't know no, the no, I mean, you don't know the no. difference between a threat and a promise. No, I want you. I, no, I want you to explain to me what's the difference between a threat. And Do a you promise. know the difference between a threat and a promise? I mean, I know I, I know the difference between a threat and a promise. And what's the difference between a threat and a promise? I mean, I want, like all right, all right, all right. The threat, like the, both of like both of them can consider the same thing. No, they can't. I got to yes, go. Thank you. Back in a moment. I just want to say thank you for everything that you do. Um, you you absolutely changed my life for the positive, and I, I just want to thank you. I was um, 29 year old beta living at home with my mom, and just was living in fear and I, in doubt, and I was I couldn't hold down a job. And then I found you, and I started listening. And I started just being more at peace, and um, I forgave my mom and I forgave my father. And it's like right after that, everything just changed in my life, and I was able to get a good job, and I moved out and. I live on my own now, and everything has just changed, and I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you for spreading that message. It really is a positive message. Amazing. That's good, man. I want people to know God loves us in ways that there are no words to express because you have nothing to compare it to, right? Stay with the silent prayer. You haven't seen anything yet. It gets better. whole lot of mess going on in the world. This is the end of hour two of the Jason Lee Peterson Show. Manhood Hour is coming right up in hour three, guys. There is one line open you can call in right now during Hake News, not Fake News. After the Jason Lee Peterson Show, thehakereport.com. And after the Hake Report, Joelle Friday TV. And after Joelle Friday TV, American Anchor Baby. You can go to jessieleepeterson.com slash show. For all the info, the links to JLP's shows, as well as Hake, Anchor Baby, and Joelle Friday. Nice. Bowen, oh, by the way, Women's Forum tomorrow night, ladies. Third Thursday of the month, 7 p.m. at Bond in Los Angeles. That is the 18th of April, 2024 A.D. 7 p.m. at Bond. Rebuildingtheman.com slash events or 1-800-411-BOND. Boeing, a Senate subcommittee, will hold a hearing today in the wake of allegations from a Boeing engineer who said that the aerospace giant took shortcuts manufacturing its 70, 777 and 787 Dreamliner jets. The, the so-called whistleblower, Sam Salepour, S-A-L-E-H-P-O-U-R, a Persian last name, like from Iran. Shout out to Iran is said to be the key witness of the hearing, could reveal new details about Boeing's safety and quality issues. Boeing's faced more than five years of questions about their commercial jets following two fatal crashes of a different model, 737 MAX, 2018 and 2019. Those crashes killed 346 people, led to a 20-month grounding of that aircraft. Costly door plug incident on Alaska Airlines flight in January also sparked allegations that some Boeing employees felt reluctant to raise questions about the safety of their planes that they are building or inspecting for fear of retaliation. What a mess. Who knows? Invasion being allowed in. House Republicans sent uh, the Senate two articles of impeachment against 
Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, a step that launches a trial in the Senate as Republican lawmakers seek to highlight crooked Joe Biden's handling of immigration policy. The Democrat-controlled Senate, however, expected to dismiss quickly those charges without any trial. They are not interested in the truth. No, no, no. The effort by the House Republicans comes a week after they voted to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas in February over his handling of the southern border by a narrow margin. They don't want to impeach crooked Joe Biden. Lame. They blamed Mayorkas and the Biden administration for the high number of border crossings. Democrats, demon rats, have slammed the impeachment as a political stunt, probably correct, saying the Republicans have no valid basis for the move. They should, uh, I don't know. Dubai flooding. There was Dubai was inundate, inundated Tuesday with a year's worth of rain in under 12 hours, half a day. Shocking video showed roads turned into rivers. The tarmac of the Dubai International Airport recently crowned the second busiest airport in the world underwater. Nearly four inches of rain fell Tuesday, according to the river weather observations at the airport. Flight disruptions expected with multiple airlines, including a flag carrier Emirates, reported flight delays. Like the rest of the UAE, United Arab Emirates, Dubai has a hot and dry climate as such rainfall is very infrequent and limited infrastructure, communist buzzword, and drainage to handle extreme flooding events. Uh, Hawaii Attorney General to release that report on the Maui wildfire. I don't expect to hear the truth from that, or a whole truth anyway. Officials in Hawaii will soon share the first phase of the findings from an investigation into the August 2023 wildfires in Maui, deadliest in U.S. and the United States in more than a century. The first phase of the report analyzes how the fire incident unfolded based on science during its first 24 to 72 hours of the fire and its aftermath, includes a comprehensive list, a timeline of events. So said Hawaii Attorney General Anne, A-N-N-E, Anne Lopez. Lopez. So, nice. Crybaby Evil ADL, 8,873 anti-Semitic, all, all one word, no hyphen to make it seem real, incidents, in 2023, according to the Anti-Defamation League, cry about it. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP, Hour 3. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show today. There are two lines over. You want to jump in there at 888 7753 773 888 77 Jesse. J E S S E, Jesse. My biblical question for this week, and it's a doozy. Do you have a fear of criticism? Do you have a fear of criticism? It's an amazing question. And you, it, you can podcast all the shows, but you can watch by calling the listen line on Talk Stream Live at 641-793-1500. 641-793-1500. 
1500. And don't forget to donate and have your comments read out loud. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. I mean, JLP Talk or Bond on JLP Cash App. Bond on JLP Cash App there. Bond JLP Cash App. Amazing. And follow us on social media. You got to know how to rumble. Follow us on rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Cozy.tv, where Christ is king. Cozy.tv slash JLP. And we're on X, JLP Talk on X, and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. So, it's Wednesday. It's the last hour of the show for today. And every Wednesday last hour is, and we take all calls, but it's manhood hour. What is a man? What is a man? man. It's an adult man. human male. Manhood. Hillary or President Trump? I voted for Hillary Clinton. Uh, beta. Beta male. A man is a male who turns to man. Live right, be right, and lead the way. Galeep, you've always wanted to be a background dancer, and what are you now? A dentist. A dentist, and, <laughs> and whose dream was that? My mom's. Richard, yeah? you're still afraid of your mom. It's kind of like I'm not even hanging out with my friends. It's like I'm hanging out with your moms. What are you talking about? Then we're happy in our current role, but what I think we have to do as women is to step outside of that role and understand we also need to lead. I know it because I know what mental <laughs> illness looks like. And oh, the reason kid. we need to lead is because we have fresh ideas. One of the things that they propose is black folk not have to pay taxes. And we understand how to listen. And they don't say racist things, but right. what they say is uh, they don't like something I said. See, you don't need to be afraid of your moms. <laughs> Did you forgive your mother? I'm working on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Amazing. There is an order to life, whether you like it, whether you like it or not, admit it or not. Nor to not, there is an order. And nothing else is going to work but that order. You mean to my left or right? Nothing else is going to, but that order. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. And when that order is not there, the, kid, the, the wife goes, women goes out of order. There's nothing to keep them there. They go out of order. They were created to follow, not to lead. You put them in a leadership role, this is what you get. And even worse. Even worse. You ain't seen nothing yet. They are putting these women, because they're not earning their way into a position, leadership position. They're giving it to them. It's another affirmative action program for, for females. Um, another affirmative action program for females. And it's because the fathers are weak. They didn't protect the children from the mothers. And then when they get involved, they become young ladies, and they get involved, the boyfriends, and if their husband, if they should get one, is weak. And so, ladies, you're going to have to go to God yourself. You know what? Forgive your mother. Forgive your fathers. Forgive the man in your life. And God will forgive you. And you'll be fine. And if ever women needed men to be the light, because you were created men to be the light of the earth, not act like the women, don't be the darkness, you were created to be the light. And any man that has anger is a woman. Everything about you is female. Your thoughts, your emotions, your up and down attitude, your fears, your doubts, your worry, your suicidal thoughts, all female. And if ever there was a time that women needed men, it is now like never before. 
uh, maybe when they, Jesus came and they couldn't find a good woman in the earth. Here's an example of uh, women needing men. If not, they'll, they'll go into their ego and they'll work double time to try to fulfill their egos. Watch this from TikTok. We don't have that. Um, let's go to destroying the children one. You don't have one D, seventeen one D. Okay, we have it. One thing I hate to see is a married man that don't post his wife nowhere on his social media, but will post everybody else. Baby, if you married to me, you try to hide me. You gonna be the one hidden in plain sight, okay? Mwah. See there? She's lost. She's angry. She's lost. That's the first sign right there. And here's another example of how badly women need the men to leave them. Because it's not going to work any other way. It just ain't going to work. It's not in the woman's nature. She can't raise a family alone. She can't teach. She can't do anything. She needs the light of the man, which is the light of God. But the men got to overcome their mothers. They got to overcome their mother. They must be born again of the fathers. And so do the ladies. You must return to the father, ladies. And talk about destroying the children. U.S. News is reporting that oftentimes the parent credit scores are low or their financial account aren't in good standing. So they decide to open a credit card, rent an apartment, or start a utility account using their child's information. But because the parents have already established poor financial habits, the child credit is ruined. Is ruined. Watch this from X. Okay, so I got you on camera. Please say it one more time because ain't nobody going to believe this. Why can't I get my house? Why can't I get my house? I prefer no camera. But, but what I'm reading here is that in 2000 that there was a eviction. In 2000, ma'am, I was born in 98. That would have made me two years old. <laughs> so how do I have an eviction when I was two? Lord. I do understand that. Um, there are just several factors that we look at here and that with the eviction and then there's a repo in 2008. I'm not uh, sure. Ma'am, I would have been 10 years old. Oh, wait. So, so me, me and my girlfriend trying to get a house so I can move out of my mama house. So, so I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to see. So, mama, please explain to me. Please. Calm down. First and foremost, first and foremost, calm your voice down while we in this room here. But mama, yeah. please explain to me how I got an eviction. How, how, do, I have, how do I have an eviction when I was two? I don't think you understand. Ma'am, and while you over here trying to judge me and everything like that, reading off everything, you don't know what happened to us. Okay? But, but ma'am, you, you're supposed to be helping me co-sign, and I find out I can't even get a house because of you. you don't how, why is all this stuff in my name? Calm your voice down my, now. My... <laughs> but that women always want somebody to respect them when they're unrespectable. Respectful. Or unrespectable. Well, she wanted to be respected. And she, according to the report, messed up the boy's credit when he was a child. What white people might not know, and, and I, we talked about it before, and I think white people do know it. In the black community, it's typical in black families. And not all, not all, not all, not all, but most. It wasn't like this when I was growing up that I was aware of. But in the black uh, families, the black woman mess up her credit because by not paying it back because black people don't don't believe in paying back. She gets credit, a credit card or something, then she doesn't pay it back. She doesn't pay it off. She doesn't pay on it. And she screws up her credit. And then what they would do is they would start using the kid name to get credit. The little child. They would use the child 
to get credit. And so when the child grows up, he can't he or she can't even get credit because mama done screwed up the credit. She doesn't pay back even when she gets the credit in the child's name. And I've tweeted about this all before. And I've heard from blacks and Hispanic who said that. They do that. One Hispanic said, mother will use her kids' social security to, get, to, uh, to give to illegal aliens. Isn't that amazing? And so I remember, so that's common in the black community, apparently in the Hispanic community, uh, or at least with the Hispanic family and the black family. I don't know what that means by community. But uh, I remember when we started in, our, in my nonprofit barn, one of the things we do besides women's forums, Thursday, Thursday night, when men's forum, first Thursday night, ladies, Thursday, Thursday night, coming up this Thursday, ladies, Sunday morning meeting, we have and we do counseling. We have an entrepreneur academy where we uh, help men start businesses, or if they're already in business, we show them how to enhance it. And I, when I first started the academy, so many young, so many men came, young and old, and their mothers had messed up their credit, so they couldn't get they had tried before, but they couldn't get a business going or a house or anything because mama screwed up their credit when they were kids. And so what I had to do, we started a credit union at Bond. We started a credit union for the entrepreneur program, and we loaned them the money, and then they had to pay back uh, with low interest rate to keep it going. But they, their credits are screwed up. This is not about racism. And they'll cry racism. Well, y'all just don't know how hard it was for the black woman. It ain't that hard to pay your bill back. And then they be having car no, house no, and everything. Now, I don't know how real that was, was right there because on YouTube they do all kind of stuff on Twitter there. But I know in reality that happens all the time. That may have been a, a note, I mean a joke, acting out something that's real. I'm told it was a skit. But it happens all the time, whether that was real or not, that we played for you. And it's bad because the kids can't get their life rolling as young adults. I don't know if the white people do that to their children, but I know it's popular in the black families. Once in a while, you can run into a woman with some common sense. Except for the ladies who are starting to work on themselves, they are returning to common sense. Here's one example of a woman with at least some common sense about this issue from Voss Media. David Hogg, a well-known gun control advocate, received a masterfully crafted response from an immigrant of Chinese descent on what the Second Amendment means. Watch this from X. Hi, my name is uh, Lily Tang Williams. Welcome to my live free or die state. Actually, I am a, a Chinese immigrant who survived communism. And uh, under Mao, you know, 40 million people were starving to death after he sold the communism to them. And 20 million people died, murdered during his Cultural Revolution. So my question to you, David, is that can you guarantee me, a gun owner tonight, our government in the U.S., in D.C., will never, never become a tyrannical government? Can you guarantee that to me? There's no way I can ever guarantee that any government will not be tyrannical. Well, then the debate on gun control is over because I will <laughs> never give up my guns. Never, never. And you should go to China to see how gun control works for dictatorship of CCP. Amazing. Good for her. Some little stupid young boy had no idea what he's doing on an ego trip as well. 
Why would anyone be against the Second Amendment? It's just, you're insane. And then before I go to the calls and super chats, one line open, 888-7753-773-888-77, Jesse. I want the men to know, the male to know that this, what I'm about to show you, ain't going to change either. Going to the woods, beating drums, dancing on dance poles, uh, all that, it's spiritual. That, that ain't going to change nothing. It's not going to help you, nor the ladies. Talk about devils watching devils fighting. This is a bad example of manhood. Not a good one at all. This is from strawmen.org. You have that, Hassan? Huh, it's um, 173A. Strongermen.org. The Stronger Men Conference exists to empower and motivate men to live out God's view of a manhood. Watch this from X. Welcome to the Stronger Men's Conference. When you're in the presence of the Lord, powerful things happen. God, whatever you have for me, I want to hear it. Help me to grow because I want to be a stronger man. That was crazy! What God did in your life, it's meant to impact the world around you. It's meant to be multiplied. That's the plan of God for you. We can change and impact the world because we serve the strong man, Jesus Christ. He says, I will go with you. Behold, I'm with you always. I'm going to give you strength. Never leave any warfare the same way as you entered it because you've been through something with Jesus. You've had an encounter with the Most High God. He's changed you and transformed you and renewed you. None of that has nothing to do with God, Jesus, or Jesus' mama. None of that. It's all emotional female acting out. And not one of those men going to change in that way, period. And as soon as they go back home, they're going to be right back in their hell. As soon as all the lights goes out, the, the, uh, everybody gone their way, they're going right back into their own hell. It's not going to change one iota of the spirit, zero. And the devil is happy that they're doing that. The devil is happy. They're not getting any stronger. If anything, they're getting weaker. That's not it, guys. Sorry. That's your mother dancing through you and hooping and hollering, carrying on. It had nothing to do with God or salvation or anything. What a sad way to live. I suggest you take over your own life and work on yourself. Don't believe me or anyone. That's not going to get you there. You got to see it for yourself. They're not pointing you straight back to the source within you. They're your enemy. They're your enemy. Isn't that amazing? Is it, is it mean, they do the song and dance in that church every day. Nobody gets better. It doesn't change. One, I, oh, Satan is dancing with them, having a hoot and out of a party. And according to Relevant Magazine, the 2024 Stronger Men's Conference, led by John Lindell, invited a former stripper and pole dancer. During the performance, he tore off his shirt, swallowed a sword, and climbed up the pole. Watch this from X.
Yeah, that'll get you to heaven. That'll make you stronger. Satan is loving that. Like Satan is like right on, y'all coming right on to heaven. All emotional, which has nothing to do with God. Isn't that amazing? The devil made a fool out of human beings. He made you emotional. He caused you to live from your imagination. And you think that's God. Ideas about God is not God. Thinking about God is not God. It's just thoughts. It doesn't change anything. And keep you in hell. So it'll be like applauding, like, yeah, we're on our way to heaven now. Relevant magazine. Mark Driscoll. I guess Mark was at the event. Mark Driscoll was going viral after being kicked off stage at the Christian Men's Conference for how he expressed concerns about the conference opening act. Watch this from X. We're going to talk about how to be an Elijah yeah. and how to deal with they have a Jezebel. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. I want to be very careful with this and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. He swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. So uh, it sounds like a pa apparently according to Sir Pastor John, like, uh-uh, John, you done. John Lindor told him, Mark that he was done up there talking about the Jezebel thing like that. What the? I'm being reminded that I interviewed Mark Driscoll before. Apparently he got the chicken song. He had a book about sex and marriage. I guess he ran and we, he got the chicken song. But anyway, you heard Mark yelling at, I mean, John yelling at Mark. You're done. Amazing. And after that, after, according to the report there, he said, you're done. He's like, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm out. Of, I'm off the stage. According to Relevant Magazine, Lindell then took over and shared his shock at Mark statements and called uh, Mark Driscoll out for being out of line. Watch this from X. So, to me, the, wow. Man. If Mark wanted to say that, he should have said it to me first. He did Matthew 18. Matthew 18. If your brother offends you, go to him privately. I talked to Mark for a half hour. There was not one word of that. He's out of line. If you want to say it, he can say it to me. You may not agree with me, you may not agree with him, but we are brothers in Christ, and there's a right way to handle disagreement. Amazing. Yeah, they say me the women. And last but not least, ladies, let me warn y'all, and I wish all of you could be at the women's forums, and even our fellowship on Sundays. But if you're able to make it to the women's forum on Thursday night where there are no recording, 
no videos. It's just plain or open it up. And you're here with the ladies are doing and how they're overcoming, what they have gone through, and what it's taken. And they didn't know what it took to overcome. They didn't know they needed to forgive their mothers. They didn't know they had to drop anger. They thought they had to go to church and hoop and holler and carry on too. According to Religion Unplugged, later in the conference, the two appeared on stage together. Lindell showed his true color. Watch this from X. But here's the thing. You have to be careful that you do not criticize people who have the anointing of God on their life. Better, better to say nothing. Because what happens is, once you begin to criticize somebody who has the anointing on them, you're in the flesh. And once you're in the flesh, then you're moving toward unbelief. And once you move toward unbelief, then you live a barren life spiritually. What a... What the? It's a spiritual battle, folks. And ladies, you can't rely on the men. You can't rely on your husband or anyone at this point. You can go straight to the father, too. Just start working on yourself. Forgive your mothers. They could help themselves. Their mother did it to them. And forgive your father. He didn't know he couldn't protect you from your mother. He had married his mama. Or David made a baby with his mama with another woman, the same spirit. And God will forgive you. You'll be on your way. You return to the Father, you'll be fine. And men, return to the Father. You're the light of the world, salt of the earth. 888-775-3773. We'll try to get John Lindell on the show. Let me take a break. When I come back, your phone calls and super chats. Back in a moment. have a counseling service and I have to admit thanks to God it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven I counsel with men and women families individuals around the world most people are unhappy they're miserable they have rough lives they're depressed suicidal young and old of all races I understand I know why and I do understand it because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. Got to open the treasure chest on D Live. It's open now. <laughs> the treasure chest is now open on D Live. My back. The Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour. TheHakeReport.com from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. James Hake is on fire. And then after that, Joel Friday TV, he black. Better known as on Kansas. And Swevenport, not Sweetport, Sweetport, but Swevenport at 11 a.m. And then the American Anchor Baby, Energy, 
given to him by God. Made it at 12 noon, flying high, not off pot, not off fentanyl, but off natural energy. At 12 noon, the American Inca Baby. Go to uh, rebuildingaman.com and make a donation, folks. I need your help. Or call 800 411 Bond. 800 411 2663. I want to go to. Madeline, a first-time call out of Pennsylvania. Madeline, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. So my question to you was, what is your perception on the youth today? Of the youth? Yes. Um, They appear to be, they are angry. They are looking for the love of a father. And as a, they hate their mothers and they're yearning for their fathers. And as a result of being angry starting in the home, they're being brainwashed in the public square, the schools, the churches, the lower and higher academic. Uh, and they've just been lied to. And then they're being made to be lazy. A lot of them don't move out from their parents at, a, at a 18, 19, 20. They're in a mess right now. They're lost. I just started watching your shows, and I actually caught your live on Sunday, and I like the message you promote for men and for women. And it, now that you told me your perception on it, I get why you're promoting the message you do, and I want to thank you for that. Well, I appreciate that, Malin. Have you gone and forgiven your mother? Yes, sir. How did it go when you went to her? What did she say? Well, uh, I basically... I uh, told her that I forgave her for everything I had resentment for in my youth because as a child's perspective, you know, you get angry at stupid things. And I was a teen mom, so coming into that and then trying to grow up at a young age, I didn't understand a lot. I still had a lot of growing mentally to do. But after we came to that, it's been a lot more peaceful. And when you ask your father why did he protect you from your mother, what did he say? Well, there, they got divorced when I was three. So well, my mom was a single parent for the most part. And I just found out recently that my father isn't my biological father, but he was still there. So you grew up thinking that he was your real father? Yeah, and I still call him dad because I respect that he was in my life. And I did have some time with him. I just didn't live with him ever. Why did your mother let you know that he wasn't your real father growing up? Or why didn't he let you know? They told me that I couldn't mentally handle it, and when I became a certain age, my mom wanted to share that with me. What a mess. What amazing. Well, Matlin, I wish you were. So are you close to your natural father now? Uh, unfortunately, by the time I did find this out, I went to go search for him on social media, and I found out he had passed away due to medical reasons, so I never got a chance to meet him. Oh, man. Well, now that he's dead, forgive him. He couldn't handle your mother because he was married to, or made a baby with his mother. He couldn't handle your mother. So when he left, he left the mother. He did not leave you. He loved you. Fathers love their children. And when they leave, they leave the mother. But the mother's not going to tell you the truth about that. But just know he loves you, all right? Oh, yes. I have peace and love and understanding towards that, and I carry on that message through my children's fathers as well. Right on. Amazing. Thanks for your call, Madeline. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You have a good day. You too. Amazing. Let me go to Jill, a first-time caller out of New York. Jill, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello. Hey, Jill. Hi. Thank you so much. I had a, a few little questions for you, so I'll get right to it. Okay. Um, do you think marriage is supposed to be hard work? People always say that. Marriage should be hard work, period. You okay. should never work at making a marriage work. The man shouldn't work at it, nor the woman. If All it right. doesn't work naturally, it's not meant to be. Yeah, I find Christians, non everyone just always says that, and... My husband and I were in the car the other day, and I, I said, Debbie just said that again. Do you, do you think it's hard work? And he said, no. Do you? And I said, no. And no. I said, are we doing something wrong? But <laughs> 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 All right. 
That, that's kind of what I thought, too. But even Christians say this all the time. Because the Christians are blind. They cannot see. They are worshiping the devil and calling him God. Well, it's funny. My two other questions kind of have to do a little bit with that. I wanted your take because I've heard you say— Hold that thought for one minute. I want to ask Hank a question. You said hard on the ego? What do you mean? Oh, that, hard. Oh, hold, no, hold on. I'm, uh, Hank just walked in uh, uh, oh. here. Of the, you know who Hake is? Yes. Oh, okay. Same Hake. Hake report. Yes. I was saying it could be hard on the ego, though. In what way? Because you have to, uh, if you have, if you have a big ego, then or you, the ego has you, then right. uh, oh, it's yeah. going to be tough. The ego want to get involved. Yeah. All it's going to do is screw it up and yeah. feel like it should be doing something. Absolutely. Go right. ahead. Go ahead, Jill. Oh. Um. So, secondly, I've heard you say you grew up going to church, and your grandmother, I think, read you the Bible, and you read the Bible on your own. Um, we started going to church a few years ago, and I actually volunteered to do the little Sunday school. Everything's pre-written. I don't have a lesson. It's just written there. Mm-hmm. And this past Sunday, in the little packet thing, there's a reading, and they're reading about, it was about the rapture, and it's fourth grade, fourth and fifth graders, and it said something like, Jesus, you know, ascended to heaven. As Christians, we can't wait for Jesus to come and get us. And something about that <laughs> kind of struck me, and I was like, oh, first of all, the whole title, I grew up in a Catholic church, so I, I don't know, the Christian church is different, and I thought, oh, maybe that's just my upbringing, and I'm not comfortable. But that sentence, I stopped for a second, I said, do you guys feel that way? Do you, you know, do you, are, are you excited for Jesus to come get you? Like, do you want him to come get you now? Because it was something about now. And they just, like, didn't say anything for a second. And I said, you can say yes, you can say no, you can, I'm just curious, you can say whatever you want. There's no right answer, it's your opinion. And they were like, no, a lot of them, the girls said, well, I want to have babies for, like, these are little kids, they, they don't. I don't, they, they said, they mostly, most of them said no, and then the boys didn't comment either way. Um, so do you believe in teaching kids the whole Bible like that from when they're that age? And this you, no, Sunday you should school, not, you should not be teaching the children the Bible, period. You should be a living example. And if you're a living example, they will see it in you. They become whatever you are, whether anger or not anger. But if you don't need to teach them because kids are already closer to the father than the adult parents are. And the moment mm. you start teaching them, you feed their intellect. And once you feed the intellect, they start to worship the devil. Yeah. So then you said you grew up going to church. How do you feel about church now? Because so much of this church is Bible study and Bible, um, you know, all that. Yeah. Even adults, if you're a new Christian, they say, come on Tuesdays, and they'll, and I never did that, but um, they'll, like, walk you through the Bible, kind of. Do you, How do you feel about all of that? The churches are synagogues of Satan. They're only, they're dressed up, but they're Whoa. not. They are dressed up, but they are not, they don't have they don't know God at all. They're teaching you about God, and they and, and and even in the teaching about God is not who He really is, right? And they're just intellectually learning, but they they never know God through the intellect. It's a setup. The preacher keeps you in hell because they're in hell. It, it's a it's a it's a false prophet teaching. Hmm. Wow. Um. So and my if, you, fi- if you notice yeah. in the churches, they have no love. They hate one another. They gossip about one another. They still have anger. They still believe that one day Jesus is going to come back. When it's already done, he has already come back. They right. don't believe that the kingdom of heaven is within. But most of all, they have no love. The I do see that have, in not, not, not all of them, but I do see what you said about gossiping and... The preachers have no love, and the people who sit under the preacher has no love because they don't. You don't think all of them, right? Just in general, or do you think all of the preachers aren't you a preacher? <laughs> 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 yeah, but I don't teach anyone the Bible. I I point them back to the Father because I know I can't. If I, of myself, I can do nothing. I can't change them. I can't even change myself. But I point them back to the kingdom of heaven within, 
And, mm-hmm. and that's where the change would take place. They'll see that they have this anger, which is of the devil, and then they go forgive their mothers and return to their father. The rest is easy. But no human being can do that. Right. Have you forgiven your mother? Yes. When you went to her, what did she say? I didn't go to her. Why not? <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I, I'm really not sure. I know I've forgiven her in my heart. Well, you haven't forgiven her if you haven't I, gone to her. God said, before you enter into the kingdom, you must go and forgive. Why haven't you gone to her? Every time I think about it, I'm not sure, like, there's, like, one thing. I, like, I hear you talk about it, even with my father, like, protecting me from her and the things you say, and that, that's not what my resentment's toward. I, I just don't know what I would say to her. So you don't have any anger toward her at all? I did. And, and what did you, can you give me one thing that you had against her at one time? Um, I felt like when she was little, even though she was there all the time, she wasn't really paying attention to me. When you were little? Yeah. Have you gone and forgiven her for that? I have not gone, no. And why not? I guess I thought because I've forgiven her in my heart, I, I know why she couldn't. I know why you haven't gone, may I tell you? Sure. You're afraid. (laughs) Yep. And do you think God has, do you believe God has given you the fear, the spirit of fear? No. And so if you love her and you see you need to forgive her, and God said, go and forgive her, why are you giving it to the fear of the enemy, which is the devil? I'm not sure. I have to think about that. And what do you think about the idea God said that if you have anything before you enter into the kingdom, you must go and forgive. He didn't say I didn't take... know about the go part. I didn't oh, see that. Okay. I saw something about when I've been reading, um, like, uh, we may you, whatever, the, and even the Our Father, forgive us as we forgive others. I never saw the go part, I guess. <laughs> 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 Do you think it's normal to be afraid of your mother? You're going to forgive her. You think that's normal to be afraid? No. Well, you got to go face your fear. Well, normal in that I think most people are, but maybe not natural. Right. It's not natural. It's an unna- That's a good point. It's an unnatural state. Yeah. It's a, it's but a, I think it's normal now because that's what most people, I, I observe most people are, but not naturally. You're right. Right. Absolutely. If you want perfect peace, you got to forgive your mother. Okay. And just because it's common, too, it doesn't mean that it's normal. Okay, okay. And have you asked your father why didn't he protect you from her? No, that's another one. I know I hear you say that all the time. I feel a little bit the opposite, but I guess you'd say that's wrong, that my, my, my dad was very much like my grandmother when you say spirit of the woman, angry, snapped at us. Um, I always feel like, why didn't my mom protect me from him? Not that he did anything, like, that's terrible, but, you know, his moods or whatever. um, But you're saying it was his job to protect me from my mom? Yes, and all the reason he couldn't because you you had identified with your mother, you were against him as well. Well, when I was younger, actually even now, I was really closer with my dad, though. Then if that's true, why have you had that talk with him? I don't know. Why I just you feel fr- like I identified more with him. You're right. I just, when you said that you identified with the mother, I felt like I identified more with him my whole life. And so have you forgiven him? Yes. You went to him? No. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you, you heard me say go and deal with the fear so you can overcome it. Yes. How will you overcome fear if you don't face it? Uh, you're right. I guess I, f- I feel like through this silent prayer and I've already gotten so much my my state of mind or heart or whatever word, I'm not sure the correct word, is already so different. I kind of just want to <laughs> just en- enjoy it, leave but- it here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you're going to have perfect peace once you face the devil and your mother. Hmm. I heard, okay. All right. Because, yeah, there are moments when I don't feel that peace. So yeah. you're saying that that will go away? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Do you obey your husband? Yes. Nice. And so real fast, you have one other question for me. Go oh, ahead. yeah. Um, this is also from the church. Are, I wanted to know, I'm curious, are you saved? Am I saved? Yes. What does that you mean? You know, they always say, I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, well, I think I know, but it's like they have a moment with Jesus where they feel like Jesus saved them. And I don't feel that, but I do feel like God is like saving me every minute. I don't know how to describe it. I don't have the words for it right now, but, but they say, these Christians say, are you saved? And I was wondering if, if you are, or I, what I you think, think that means. I think there's just another made up intellectual word from the Christian. And if you notice, if they do mean you, you, you believe in God, they still have anger in their hearts. And if you still have anger, they're still lying because you can't love God and have anger. You can't serve the devil and God. But I don't quite know what they mean by you saved. Do you ever hear people say that? Though? Oh, yeah. I hear it all the um, time. Maybe I should. Maybe I would just ask them that. I'm yeah, not, ask them yeah. and see what they say. And let me know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. Um, but, but go I appreciate for, it. Go What's and that? forgive your mother. See what it is that you... That that why you're angry at her, and then realize she can't help herself. You know how you're afraid to go face her. Mm-hmm. She has the same spirit. Mm. You got it from her, and so forgive her, face her. You're gonna shake in your boots, as you heard me say. Yeah. But shake. God is with you, and God will save you from the shaking. Okay. And my, and my dad too. He has the same. They both did. Yeah. So it was like a lesbian couple. That's right. <laughs> So yeah. you got to face your father right. as well. Yeah. Let me Thank know how you. it goes, all right? All right. Thanks so much. Take a- care. Amazing call, Gio. No, thanks. All Take right. care, Jesse. Okay. Bye. Bye now. Super Chat. Super Chat. Super, super. super Aries one with a diamond. We in a goofy uh, country now. Nah. That's for sure. <laughs> what the? Thank you. Kofi 19. Kofi 19. Donated a rumble rant. Is Jesse familiar with the singing with this singing group from Ufala, Alabama? They're amazing. I'll send you the tip. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Donnie Girl's idea rumble rant. I asked my boss for a chance to talk about the. Uh, Is it a Christian singer or a rock and roll group? Christian, gospel. Oh, gospel singer. Yeah. Uh, Relatively okay. recent. Oh. Uh, no, uh, no, not recently. Don says I asked my boss for a chance to speak about opportunity or a raise shook like a tree during an earthquake <laughs> amazing i feel peace about what is to come more money or promotion is fine with me moving on up that's right to the east side <laughs> <laughs> you're thank an, you you're an old chills is a monthly paying subscriber on rumble thank Jason you. peterson amazing. Ba- babies just fall out and start working in the fields there you go <laughs> that's how i should go thank you at this point just call me mike Three coffees. Bond, JLP, and crew, get yourself together and ride your funky soul. It's a man's world. Papa got a brand new bag. Fire emoji. Salute <laughs> and blue heart. It's a man's world. It's a man's world. But it would be nothing without a girl. You heard this song? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. White Lion bought a coffee. Democrats and Republicans are two wings of the same bird. That's for sure. That includes Jesse's savior, Zion Dawn. Oh, no. <laughs> the Great White Hope is different. <laughs> Interesting you knew who he was talking about when we he said... We are going to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. I rest my case. Nice. Nice. That's Trump. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, White Lion, as I like always. I like Trump does this, too. He gives the 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 uh, victory fist. Yes. Not black. Not black power. No, not communism. No, not black power. Not socialism. Charlotte, Thank you. 
coffee from Charles. Hi, hey Jesse, your friend must be in a fallen state if he believes Republicans are ten times worse than Democrats. Republicans aren't that great, but they are no way near as evil as Democrats. What the? Yes, they are. They are the same. Two peas in a pot. Pay attention. You see, two peas in a pot. Why do you think they have gone along with the Democrats about everything in the last four years? There's nothing that the Republicans have done to make America better. Not one I own of a thing. Check it out. you see. Thank you. Chris Person, 77, bought a coffee. Brian, uh, oh, Bri- Brian Deacon from the Gospel of Luke, 1979 movie, was a tough Jesus. Highly recommend. Brian Jesus? Brian Deacon. He was a tough Jesus. That's a movie? <laughs> 1979, the Gospel of Luke was the name of the movie. Oh. He was the actor. So it's, okay, I t- and Jesus was tough. I'll check it out. Per Chris Person, seventy-seven. Thank you. I'll check him. it out. Thank you. Uh, I need to see a r- tough Jesus, not some little nice Jesus granny. Thank you. We need a seventies Jesus. That's for sure. Greenwald bought a copy. Best portrayal I've seen of Jesus in a movie is the nineteen fifty-nine version of Ben Hur. They don't show his face, but he stops. That's a four-hour movie. He stops a sadistic slave driver with a glance. After all, Jesus is how God showed himself it to the world. They don't show Jesus in that movie? They don't show his face, but they show him he stops a sadistic oh. slave driver with a glance. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, Pastor Chatelet Thank donated you. a rumble rant. Dear Jason, the same people who gave your forced opinions to you covered up for Epstein while pardoning parading around drag children. You are not allowed to disagree with your authority, but you a free thinker? Who the Jason? Yeah. <laughs> From New York? <laughs> what the? Lily Pooh, a uh, rumble rant. Oh, the children of the lie gonna learn. Jesse is the best teacher for the job. Amazing. Thank you. I appreciate your support, too. Thank you. Superman's daddy bought a coffee. Good morning, men. Hate came straight in from the beach. Hassan just gave Sandy <laughs> belly rubs and something to eat. Truthfully, Anchor Baby <laughs> is here legally. Sean's sitting flat in the producer's seat. And Jesse never missing a beat. Amazing. Amazing. P.S. Sean, post everybody's baby pictures. Laughing face with tears coming out. He left out joy. Uh, he black. He did. Oh, he left out joy. Uh, he black. Wow. Amazing. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. Jitsu James Coffee. Harold making some amazing points. I was laughing out loud when he kept calling Jesse Mr. Patterson. Great <laughs> show today. <laughs> Peterson, but he he, he, he apologized. Laughing emojis. It's no big deal. <laughs> Sion bought a coffee. Jesse loved. The black mama will check the child, but the white mama has spoiled their kids. Even after the child cursed them out, they say, I love you. Laughing face. When he's <laughs> cussing with profanity. That's right. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Benny Hill says, keep up the great work, Jesse. Hake with the good hair. Joel dancing for Jesus. Nick Bonjour. Jesse, I am a father who won in family court. My son is now in my care. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Right on. This is tough Jesus. That's tough Jesus putting his foot on Satan's shoulder. (laughs) Muscular Satan. But that Jesus got wings. Oh, true. I didn't catch that. Sean said that's a tough Jesus. That's an angel behind him. It's not hit Jesse. It's not Jesus' wings. Oh, thank you. The key bought a coffee. It's interesting to note the Jews missed the witness of Christ when he dwelt amongst men because they anticipated the Messiah to return as a tough warrior who would wield his power and strength to conquer and overthrow Rome, overthrow the Rome government. Instead, he came as a lamb to lead to the slaughter, a beautiful illustration of peace through strength. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> And shout out Coffee Talk with Sandra, Aries One, Evgeny Crosby for the support on D Live. Thanks, guys. I think that's it. We'll see. I appreciate it. <laughs> Amazing. That's a hint to end. <laughs> we are, are we out of time? Yeah. Well, thank you for your support. We are uh, out of time here. I'm out of time. Tomorrow is Bible Thumper Thursday. The Hake Report is coming up now. And after the Hake Report report at 11 a.m., Joel Friday, TV, he black. And then after that, after that, uh, the Anchor Baby. Get on that straight and narrow. Forgive your mother and your father. You'll see. Yeah, one more. Second. Chris V. bought a coffee. Forget about the blacks. What's wrong with the Venezuelans? Hijacking ships in Manhattan? NYC is insane. <laughs> Hadn't heard about that one. Thanks I haven't for the heard tip. about that either. Come on, man. What the? What the? But thank you. I hadn't heard about that. Thank you. I'm out of time. 
forgive, folks. Apologize for resenting. I'm sorry, mother. I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry for resenting you. God will forgive you. He will change your heart from anger to love. He will open up your eyes so you can see that you're not your thoughts. All thoughts are all lies all the time. And he'll take that away from you. Stop identifying with them. I'll be back tomorrow. The Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you all so much for your support and everything. Hate is coming Amazing. Up now. Amazing. So, here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Other than sex, I wonder why would a man even need a woman today? Women don't know how to cook. They don't know how to clean. They're in competition with men. They don't want to be wives and mothers. Some want to get married, but they don't want to live in that proper position of life. Because the only purpose of marriage is to have a family. And that's been known forever. And so if you don't want to have children, there is no need to get married. And so I was wondering... Why would a man even get married today? I never thought I'd see the day when women would be come out of her natural role and be like a man, even though she hate that role. When she was with a man that's weak, she hate him. But if he try to be strong, she'll stop it. I never imagined that. You're seeing good destroyed and abnormal is presented as normal.